from the banks of the Tennessee River. Welcome to Neyland Stadium. Welcome to Knoxville, Tennessee. It's only mid-September. It's an out-of-conference game against Akron tonight. It is a sellout on Rocky Top. 100,000-plus in orange and white here to see the Vols try to defend home turf against the Zips of Akron. It's a tune-up for UT before they host Florida here next week, and the fans are charged up for their number 15 Tennessee Vols. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for hanging out with us. Happy Saturday night from Neyland Stadium. Drew Carter, Aaron Murray upstairs. We'll check in with Ashley Strohline on the field in just a second. And Aaron, you take the pulse of Knoxville and the pulse of this state. Everyone is fired up about the Vols, and for good reason. Well, they should be. This offense is one of the best in the country. We knew they were going to be good with Hendon Hooker back at quarterback. The question was on defense, and I've been impressed the first two weeks. And if this defense can just keep getting better each and every week, they're going to be dangerous once SEC play starts next weekend. Yeah, and they lived in the backfield last week in a win at Pitt but the story with Tennessee it's always going to start with the quarterback Hendon Hooker four years at Virginia Tech now in his second at Tennessee last year had the best passing efficiency of any UT quarterback ever Aaron well, well we think Tennessee offense we might think little screens on the outside not so fast when you got Hendon Hooker at quarterback my man likes to drive the ball deep down the field vertical throw after vertical throw it was a big game on the road last week versus Pittsburgh but what we know they got offense they have weapons with Tillman and Hyatt and McCoy and in the big touchdown in overtime one of the best quarterbacks in the nation I'm excited to watch him go after it tonight no question about the quarterback for UT on the Akron side there is a question for more on that let's go down to Ashley yeah guys Akron quarterback DJ Irons suffered a knee injury in the team's week two matchup against Michigan State we spoke with him on Thursday he said I'm day to day right now but I feel good and I want to play well I can tell you he will be playing in this matchup he was on the field warming get hype he is ready for the challenge that is this Tennessee defense good stuff Ashley that's actually what Aaron said to me when yeah. we came to the booth let's get hype let's get juice let's get hype 102,000 people you better bring it and we're gonna see that balls high paced high octane offense to start Tennessee won the toss and they will receive it's the fastest offense in the country. Buckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a sold-out Neyland Stadium and an undefeated top 15 Tennessee team. Let's have some fun on a Saturday night on Rocky Top. It's football time in Tennessee. On the opening kickoff, Tennessee brings it back to the 30-yard line. Jimmy Holiday, number six in orange, sets up the balls with good field position. And this is a Tennessee offense, Aaron, that's going to snap the rock every 20 seconds or so. It is the fastest pace in America. They don't mess around. You better be ready defensively because they don't care if you're subbing, not subbing. It's go, 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 go. How do we put this defense on their heels? It's basketball on grass. It's fun to watch. I'm excited. This will be the first time live watching it in action. Last week, Hendon Hooker. 27 of 42, 325 and two touchdowns at Pitt, the reigning SEC Offensive Player of the Week at the controls for this Tennessee offense. They start on the ground with Jabari Small, who shoots through the middle for a first down Tennessee. Just Lord Boateng in there on the stop. Well, if you're going to play a five-man box, they're going to run the football. You think pass it. Well, if they're going to be light, they are not afraid to hand the ball off early. And you see the tempo already. It's small one more time. The starting running back this year, this time he gains about three. Bubba Arcelanian, the sixth-year senior and three-time captain in there on the tackle. And small is dinged up. This is the last thing you want to see if you're a UT fan from a game like this where you're heavily favored. Yeah, and you know heading to this game, the running game is going to be important as well. Akron doesn't want to get beat over top. They want to be able to stay back and force Tennessee to methodically move the ball down the field. So we're going to see what exactly happened with Jabari. Good wrap-up tackle. It's a great tackle. It's a great tackle. Form tackle. He is a football player. Arcelanian He's only 5'10". But he is their best defensive player. We got a chance to talk to him this week, and he's an impressive young man who's got a seventh year of eligibility if he wants it. This is still mind blowing to me when we go yeah. six years, seven year. <laughs> you know, these kids are just pulling years out of their pockets. Hey, I want to stay in college a little bit more. So you could still be at Georgia. I mean, I, <laughs> I got I only went five, so I guess I yeah. got two left. I get a COVID and 
find a medical in there somewhere. Yeah, go compete with Stetson. It's good <laughs> to see Jabari Small walking off. He's a guy who came in as the unquestioned top dog in this backfield preseason third team all SEC. And you said it Aaron Josh Heupel we all think pass 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 but they want to run the ball mm -hmm. so let's hope Small's OK. Second and seven Jalen Wright's the running back he's actually their leading rusher in both games this year. He's to the right of Hooker now and he gets the call on second down and seven right on top of that power T Curtis Harper the Syracuse transfer in there to make the stop sets up third down and short. Well, what they're seeing right now is just two high safeties and and you know we showed a lot of passing the ball vertically down the field Akron saw that tape too they do not want to get beat one on one the outside. Third and short again on the ground again it's right he's right near the marker across midfield and he is short it's fourth down for Tennessee and here we go with the pace wasting no time they line up to go for it on fourth down and in inches right back to right and he falls forward for a first down Tennessee. Well, this is where the biggest difference is when you look at this matchup. It's going to be on the interior on both sides, the offensive line versus the defensive line. And Tennessee, one of the better units in the SEC, going against a smaller unit for Akron. You should be able to get that fourth in inches. Yeah, four of their five starters are back along the line. Hooker throws for the first time tonight, fires a bullet to the left sideline, trying to hook up with Brew McCoy. It falls incomplete. Good coverage there from Tyson Durant. That's great coverage, and it's funny. They, they coaching staff told us yesterday, hey, we Brew's done such a great job of, of buying into the system, of doing everything right, has not been as involved as we want. So we're going to try to get him going early in this game and often see if they get him matched up some more times one-on-one -on -one the backside in some of these three-by-one formations. Motion man's the tight end, Jacob Warren. On second down and 10, Hooker will throw again. Looking right side, pump once. Open man sideline, nice throw. That's a dart from the quarterback. Finds Jalen Hyatt, fresh off 11 catches last week at Pitt for nine yards. And that's a great job by Hyatt. He was running a wheel route. Defender stayed on top. He stopped very friendly to the sideline. Great throw by Hooker. Third and short, Tennessee moving again. Right finds a hole on the left side of the line. First down balls to the 35 of the Zips. Now you can't catch your breath against these guys. No, and it's hard to substitute too because they're not subbing. You know, you have to wait till Tennessee really substitute before you can mix up some new bodies on defense. They snap it again on first down and 10. Hooker got hit as he threw, and that was dangerous. It fluttered in between the hash marks. Pressure applied by Ryan Johnson for Akron, and that could have been a pick for Akron. Great job getting his hand in there just at the last second was Ryan Johnson and he had the, he had what he wanted a double move from Jalen Hyatt a sluggo so we call a slant and go had his defender beat over top just great job defensively by Johnson be able to get one hand on there just as Hooker was releasing it Johnson working against the left tackle Gerald Mincy starting for the third time in as many games this year for UT back on the ground with Wright who gets wrestled down after a short gain Kyle Thomas the nose tackle in there on the stop to set up third down and ten. So the Vols really trying to establish the run here. Hooker has thrown three times. They've carried it seven. Eleventh play of the drive. Third down and nine. Four wide for Hooker. To the left side. McCoy couldn't squeeze it. And that sets up fourth down and nine from around the 35. This could be decision time for Josh Hype. We saw last week Hooker was a little bit high in that game versus Pittsburgh early. A little bit of jitters. And I think that was a mixture of McCoy not fully running and committing to the route, but ball still a little bit high in that first possession here. It'd be a 50-plus yard field goal from here. They draw Akron offside. It's a free play, so Hooker cuts it loose. Right sideline. Man was there. Cedric Tillman, his top receiver, couldn't haul it in. Jalen Hook's on the coverage, but this should be an offside against Ryan Johnson in the zips, giving Tennessee another chance on fourth down. And that was Ryan Johnson. He's the one who got some pressure earlier. You're going to see him top of your screen. Just a little bit anxious there on the fourth and long situation, trying to get after the quarterback. And Cedric had a step. Great job right there by Hooks. Staying alive, being able to come in there. And Tennessee going to go for a field goal now. They bring out Chase McGrath, the transfer from USC. 
pretty much every team in the country has a few USC transfers this year. It's a 47 yard kick for the first points of the night. And McGrath is wide left, just barely missed. So Tennessee comes up empty on the first possession of the game after they won the toss and elected to receive. McGrath misses for the first time this year. It was three for three on field goals, 12 for 12 on extra points coming in. You know, we're talking about a great defensive stop right there for Akron. Force UT to a fourth down twice, a couple third downs. Weathered the storm, that's what you want to do. I mean, you're going to continue to see Akron play two high safeties and force Tennessee to run the football, run the football, and then see once they get closer and closer to the red zone if they can slow them down. So that was an 11 play drive for Tennessee that ends in no points. DJ Irons is the quarterback, as Ashley mentioned pregame. Left early last week at Michigan State, and before he can take his first snap, a whistle and a flag. Start, start. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Ken Williamson runs this SEC crew tonight. That's Anthony Wiggin, the starting right guard for the Zips. First of possibly many. It's someone who's played here. It is tough to hear. These offense linemen are going to get a little jittery going against this D line. First play from scrimmage for the Zips is a screen out to the right side, and the pitch transfer, Shockey Jacques Louis. ACC fans and Tennessee fans will remember him from his time with the Panthers. Four years at Pitt. He's their top receiver this well, they, year. They, they want to give him the ball and plays just like that. Don't mess around with this D-line. Quick passes, quick screens, condensed formations, lots of motions and shifts you'll see throughout this game for Akron. Joe Moorhead calls the plays. Former Mississippi State head coach on the jet sweep. Tony Grimes, the receiver, bobbled it but had it. And a solid gain on second down and nine sets up third and short for Akron. And this is when 102,000 people come alive. Saturday night in Neyland, third down. One of the most terrifying places in all of college football right here. There's Coach Moorhead. He played here once as the head coach at Mississippi State. They lost a tight one a couple years ago. Cam Wiley is the running back. 101,915 fans, the official number tonight at Neyland, a sellout. Lots of motion, again, pre-step indicator, zone coverage. Play clock at one. Irons gets it off with four wide receivers. Evades the rush, steps up, got hit as he threw. And that's incomplete, brings up fourth down. There's Byron Young, the preseason All-SEC first teamer applying the heat. And that's a great job on the back end. That is what we call coverage pressure. No one open, four-man rush. They do a great job up front. The one thing you love about DJ Irons, his ability to maneuver in the pocket and just gets it off there. Tennessee responds with three and out. Noah Getman out to kick it away. Trayvon Flowers, the deep man for Tennessee, calls for a late fair catch. But did they catch the fair catch? It seems like they didn't blow the whistle. Every zip on the field is saying, hey, put the hand in the air. So he shouldn't have that return. And now the officials are saying he'll be down at the 25-yard line or so. Trying to be a little sneaky, sneaky, Mr. Flowers. He's, he's getting dicey there. He did muffle <laughs> punt last week <laughs> against Pitt. So Trayvon Flowers successfully executes the fair catch, trying to get cheeky with a fake fair catch, but 0-0 as the Vols take back over. Scoreless drives for Tennessee and Akron, but all Vols fans are worried about Jabari Small. Let's go down to Ashley with an update on the running back. First play of a new drive for Tennessee is Jalen Wright in there in place of Jabari Small, but Wright's been their top rusher in each of their first two games. Right back to him, running the tempo for Tennessee, picks up a first down and drags some zips for more across their own 40-yard line. Bubba Arcelanian on the tackle. Let's go back down to Ashley. 
Yeah, guys, Jabari Small walked off the field into the tent. He's been a few minutes in there. Then he walked out on his own, went straight to the bike. He's getting some movement there. He's focusing on the upper body. I am told it is an upper body injury, but he is expected to return at some point during this game. All right, good stuff, Stro, and that is a sigh of relief for Tennessee fans. That was Princeton Fant, the tight end, number 88, who made the catch on first down, sets up second and six for Hooker, lets it rip. There's Tillman, had him, had a step inside the 10. Jalen Hooks was beaten by Tennessee's best receiver, Hooker just overthrew. And it's a post route, and this is always a problem for right-handed quarterbacks. When you throw a post ball, it's going to tend to fade to the right, and you have to overcompensate, throw the ball almost to that... that near hash he's on the left hash right now throw it closer to that side it's almost split the goal post you saw Tillman having to fade back to try and make a play in the football did a great job stacked his defender just throw it out there let him come run underneath it just throw it more across the field last week Tillman eight catches 162 yards in the game winning touchdown and double overtime third down again for Tennessee with five on the timer third and six hooker this time he escapes the pocket and he's dangerous with his legs a big chunk for the quarterback inside the Akron 30 Bubba Arcelani and finally dragged him down well, that's funny talking to the staff yesterday they asked you how do you how do you settle Hendon down in a football game and one way that he wants to get settled down is by running the football whether designed or plays like that just let him get hit he's a big kid he can take the pounding a lot of quarterback design draws last week versus Pittsburgh. You like that, right, when you were playing? Get hit once, call yeah, the nerves? I, I enjoyed getting hit, but I also wasn't 6'4", 220 <laughs> like Hendon, so it, it hurt a little bit more. And we've got an injured zip all the way back at the other 40-yard line. That's Jess Lord Botang, their leading tackler last year, and the Michigan State transfer, one of their best defensive players. There's Joe Moorhead, year one at Akron. He spent five years on the staff in the mid-2000s, won a conference championship in the MAC back in 2005, the Zips' only conference title as a program. He knows it's a rebuilding project in the rubber capital of the world. They went 3-27 and 27 in the last three years combined. First down and 10 for Hooker, low snap, bobble, jump passes on the money. It's fat, and he's inside the 10. How about that for improv from Hooker? And just a heck of an athletic play from Hooker, too. Bad snaps, able to get it, and he keeps his eyes up. Look at he's still finding his tight end down the field. Beautiful throw. And they run it again. High octane offense. Jump ball for Tillman. He was hand fighting with hooks again. Flag flies, too much contact. And Hooks is going to get picked on this entire game going against one of the premier receivers in this country and Cedric Tillman. One, one thing, though, for it's the second time we've seen Hendon under throw the ball on these fade routes. One was about the 30-yard line, this one in the red zone. Just get the ball up a little bit faster, give his receiver a chance. First and goal from the two, right behind his blockers, churning toward the goal line. He might be in. What an effort from Jalen Wright. Touchdown, Tennessee! Jalen Wright would not be denied, and he puts the balls on the board. And a great job by Princeton Fant coming around. You see him taking on the linebacker one-on-one -on -one in the hole. And then the big guy, Jalen Wright, finishing off. <laughs> Keep those legs turning. He's got five or six zips coming along for the ride. I think they're going to hold this extra point just to make sure, but I don't know how they'd review that. Uh, There's a lot a of bodies. Massive humanity around him. You know what? This is why this is why they squat and, and your skinny legs would have fallen <laughs> backwards. You know, got to keep driving, keep pumping. For the folks at home behind the scenes, but before Aaron said that, he looked at my legs, <laughs> made sure they were skinny, <laughs> and then he said that. You didn't have to look, pal. You knew they were skinny. <laughs> so Jalen Wright, they're confirming his touchdown. His second rushing touchdown of his sophomore season. What do you think? 
pass. All it takes is you just got to touch the white line with the football. And I think that right hand, we're getting a good view here. We just got to make sure those knees are up. He's driving, he's driving, he's driving, he's driving. And they said it's a touchdown. Yeah. Great job from our crew to get all those looks. Seven plays, 74 yards in under two minutes. That is Tennessee personified as McGrath comes out to split the upright. Seven nothing balls. Jalen Wright puts Tennessee on the board. Starting running back is out. Wright comes in and scores for UT. Josh Heupel's Tennessee Vols lead seven zip midway through the first quarter and folks you are looking at one of the most popular men in the state of Tennessee right now Josh Heupel comes in it's a rebuilding project for a Tennessee program that was really down after the last regime they come in make a bowl game last year finish above 500 introduce this high octane offense and as a reward in the offseason we just learned he's been extended through 2028. Good for him, man, and, and for all new coaches out there, the name of the game has changed. It's about offense, and what Hypo has brought to Tennessee is fun, energy, excitement, offense. And there's a reason why there's 102,000 people here packed out for a game versus Akron. They want to see what this offense looks like. The offense just scored on a seven play, 74 yard drive in under two minutes. Paxton Brooks out to kick it away to Shockey Jacques Louis, the pit transfer for Akron. This is a loud, packed Nealon Stadium. It lands on the orange and white checkerboard in the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 25. And here's the offensive numbers we're talking about, Aaron. This guy comes over from UCF mm. after three years. It is a blazing, lightning fast offense. And like I said in the open, it's not just the screens on the outside. You get caught up with that. It's like, hey, they're just going to go fast and they're just going to dump it out to the receivers and, you know, they're going to try to make guys miss. No, they're going to push the ball vertically down the field. Post routes, wheel routes, wheel comebacks, go balls, verticals down the field, which makes this offense so challenging. And if you want to play back, if you want to play too high safety to protect your corners, they've shown in this game and in the past they will commit to the run, whether with the running backs or with Hendon Hooker. Play clock down to three for DJ Irons and Akron. And before they snap it, timeout, Joe Moorhead timeout. and the Zips. Akron, first timeout of the half. So Joe, Joe Moorhead knows plenty about this This will this be a 30-second timeout. Two years as the head coach at Mississippi State. Now they said there's really no way to simulate the noise in this building. Listen, you can blare Rocky Top at volume 11 and practice as much as you want, but until you're actually in here with almost 102,000 people, you don't really get it. Right? Oh, especially third down or if you're backed up inside your 10-yard line, it's you can't hear anything. You just can't. You can scream and yell all you want. You have to be good with all your nonverbal communication skills as an offense. Let's try this again for the Zips. Irons in the gun, four wide receivers. Irons thought about throwing. Now he'll escape the pocket. He's dangerous with his legs. A fantastic basketball player in high school, but he's got to just ice this one. The safety, Jalen McCullough, came down to apply the pressure. And Jalen did a great job because DJ wanted to throw an inside slant. He came in there from his safety spot, read the quarterback's eyes, made DJ pull it back, and then was able to force him to throw the ball once he was outside the pocket just how athletic this defense is and they were athletic last year just didn't have the depth now you're going to see a lot of rotation especially in that front seven to keep fresh bodies irons in the pistol this time a flag flies early on this play two of them now one on either sideline it's a short wow. game for cam wiley they're starting running back and the minnesota transfer let's see what ken williamson calls here Up. Someone has to be on the line of scrimmage here on the left side, bottom of your screen. And that's on beef, that's on the coordinator there. That's on the, uh, the not the players because the guy the, the, the receiver essentially was in motion. He had to be off the line of scrimmage. So 
bad job formationally from the coaching staff putting them in a situation. They declined it. It's third down. Listen to this place. Play clocks at one. Irons just gets it off on third down and ten. Here come the Vols. That pass is short and a dangerous one. It sets up fourth down and ten as Irons was under siege. It's a Tennessee defense that had 16 quarterback hurries last week at Pitt. 26 total pressures last week and end up only bringing four, but the stun up front was able to make DJ a little bit uncomfortable, and he's already battling a lower leg injury from last week's game. That right leg is a little not as strong as it was at the 6-6 frame, so he needs everything he can to be able to step into these throws tonight to be accurate down the field. Yeah, good point, partner. Trayvon Flowers back to receive the punt from Noah Getman. No fair catch this time. Here comes Flowers, the star safety for UT, and a great punt returner as well. Two flags are on the field, one back at the 30, one at the 40. Got to believe these will be against the receiving team. As it stands now, a 47-yard punt, 15-yard return. Let's see what the call is against Josh Heupel's team. Carry return, clock in the back. Receiving team number 14. 10 yard penalty from the punt, the foul. First down. That's Christian Charles, the defensive back for Tennessee. Pushes him back. There's that block in the back to spring flowers. So the Vols will move back, but this offense can score from anywhere. Leads Akron 7-0 in the first quarter. And coming up next, SEC football final is back for another season with Darinoka, Chris Doring, Benjamin Watson, and Takeo Spikes. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break down all the games, 10.30 p.m. Eastern on SEC Network. After South Florida and Florida, Gators expected to handle business there and set up a potential top 20 matchup here against Tennessee next week. Hendon Hooker on the first play of a new drive, lets it rip, right sideline, near the 30. That's Squirrel White, the freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama. He's a slot receiver, but they threw it up that time, and he catches it for 48 yards. Oh, gotta love him fighting back. Not worried about that defensive pass interference. Go make a play in the football, Squirrel. Marquarius White, they call him Squirrel. It's his long, long time nickname. They try that side again. Brew McCoy is there. Great defense that time from Jalen Hooks, but they throw a flag. They are picking on 29. Well, it's the fourth time they've gone to the outside on these, these, these fade balls or go balls on the outside. And you know, they've got a couple pass interferences, but you know, I said it earlier, Hennon just is a second behind because each one of these, the receiver has a step on hooks. And if he gets it out there, it's a touchdown, but still get the PI. Defense number 38. 50 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And Hendon, very accurate quarterback. And he trusts his tall receivers to go up there and make a play. But if you throw that a hair earlier, you have an opportunity to get a touchdown. Which again, I think, I think you said it earlier, Eric Ainge had the completion record at 67%, broken last year from Hendon Hooker at 68%. And Tennessee is in the red zone now. Brew McCoy, by the way. Brew is short for bruiser. He's a big dude, 6'3", 220. Good jump ball threat. Hooks in his own right is 6'2", 195. Play clock is under 10. That's a rare occurrence for this Tennessee offense. Hooker in the gun. Running back is Dylan Sampson, the true freshman out of Baton Rouge, who gets the call. He's a speed demon. This time he burrows forward for about five on first down. Bryce Wilson is there on the stop. Yeah, I'm excited to see him in space in this offense. They rave about how fast he is. All he needs is a crease, and he can take it. This time they fake it to Samson. Hooker felt the rush but couldn't escape it. Brought down from behind in the backfield. You see the Tennessee coaches now set up in third down and long after Jalen Kelly Powell comes down to make the sack. Looks like they had Akron offside for a second. They'll slow it down on third and nine. Alex Golish, the offensive coordinator, told us they like to have Hendon Hooker settle in sometimes by letting it fly, and we've seen two deep shots on this drive already. 
Hooker to throw, looking left side, over the middle, McCoy snares it, breaks a tackle and scores. Two flags are down on the opposite side, but as of now, it's a touchdown for bruising number 15. Yeah, it's going to be on the offense, push off there on McCoy. They've been loving that inside or that outside slant. You clear on the inside, come around with the five-yard in slant route. Got a little bit too physical there on his release. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. There's nothing wrong. They got a little feisty there at the line of scrimmage. I think that is perfectly okay by me for McCoy again. Rob the touchdown right there. What position did you play again? I think a defender would agree with that. That was yeah. kind of soft. It sets up third and 24 for Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Near field goal range now, but there's a flag, so a free play for the Vols, and Hooker airmails it trying to find Jalen Hyatt. Ryan Johnson's offside again, so after he applied some pressure early, this will be his second offside. Offside, defense number four in the neutral zone to snap. Five yards to the We talk, We talked about Akron last week, and bottom of your screen, just going to get a little bit too early there. Akron was moving the ball last week in the game, and what really shot them in the foot was turnovers. You can't go into an opposing team's house and, and hurt yourself with penalties and turnovers, and we've seen a couple here so far. Now third down and 19. Hooker to throw. Right sideline. Complete. It's the tight end, Warren. Dragging some zips toward the sticks, and this could set up a decision for Heupel. It'll be fourth down and two after the gain of 16 on third and long. Man, I was standing next to Warren in, in pregame warm-ups, and he is, he's a big man. He's all 6'6". Six, six. That man-to-man -man coverage everywhere. Take your best matchup. UT is lined up to go for it with under six to play in the first quarter. They run the option. Sampson around the right end. The freshman goes pinballing over the pylon. What's the call? Touchdown, Tennessee. Well, you want speed? Well, let's go a little speed option with Hucker and Sampson. It's one on one with number 16, Nate Thompson. He takes the quarterback. And 24 takes it into the end zone for another Tennessee touchdown. Oh, he took out the pylon camp. Dylan owes us one. I mean, they got NIL money now. They can afford <laughs> to, to, to pay us back for a little pylon cam action. That's another 70-plus yard touchdown drive in under two minutes. Five plays, 79 yards, a buck 49. Moving on the field with a touchdown at the pylon. The previous play is under review. And Ken Williamson and co. will take a look at it. It was a lot of contact. I think Dylan Sampson's got to be saying, hey, if I got crunched like that by K.J. Martin, 15 for Akron, you better give me the six. Right now it's a nine-yard touchdown for the freshman, the second of his Tennessee career. I think he's in. I mean, you may even get targeting on that one, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think clearly a touchdown there, and unfortunately, I don't know if we have the pylon came to look at it, but... I think and remember the call in the field yeah. is a touchdown. It's going to be hard to overturn this one. But I'm interested to see if there's any look at a possible target. You see the defender lowers his head, helmet to helmet contact. You got to look for lowering the helmet. Forcible contact, yep. head or neck area with the crown of the helmet, which is the top of the helmet in a six inch radius. Yep. Right there, I mean, that to me defines a lot of those rules there. Number 15, K.J. Martin, defensive back coming in a little hot. But yeah, touchdown-wise, I, 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 to me, I, I saw nothing that I wouldn't think that this is a uh, another six points on the board for the orange and white. Credit to Dylan Sampson. Kids got no fear out of Dutchtown High School in Baton Rouge. 
He ran for almost 5,000 yards at high school. He broke the record of some guy named Eddie Lacy. Oh, SEC that guy. fans might recognize that yeah. name. It's not bad. Not bad. Listen, if, he, if he's got that kind of speed and then not, not, not afraid to lower the boom, too, and take some punishment at the goal line, Tennessee fans should be excited. I mean, we talk so much about the receivers and, and Hendon Hooker and what they can do in the passing game, but you got to have a compliment, and we've seen it so far in this game and, and this season. After further review, through the field stands. Touchdown. So the 102,000, give or take a few, can celebrate again. Cue up Rocky Top again. A little taste of the fight song there. You know, people don't know Rocky Top is not the official fight song of UT. But it's the song they play the most. Chase McGrath on for the extra point. And with just under six to play in the first quarter, Tennessee leads 14 zip over the zips. The offense is as advertised and once again scoring in the first quarter multiple times. Hey Smokey. Smokey's enjoying it. He's getting his exercise in for the yeah. night. He's getting the steps and he could run with this offense. But, I mean look at that 74 yards, seven plays, five plays, 79 yard touchdown. Both under two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what an awesome atmosphere. You know, a lot of SEC teams are doing this now with the light show for night games. This is the first Saturday home game of the 2022 season, and Tennessee has shown out at Neyland Stadium. Well, the new scoreboard looks great in one of the end zones, new seating area as well. Tell you what, you hear the good old Rocky Top when you're playing them all week long, and it's just you wake up sweating, you're singing it. <laughs> By Friday, you're just like, oh my goodness. And we're gonna keep track of it, I think, tonight. I don't know what, we're gonna find out what the record is, and it <laughs> may be broken. Hey, ESPN Stats and Info, if y'all are watching, all right, so we've got two Rocky Tops so far. We've gotta find the record. I think they're going for it tonight. Two touchdowns in the first nine minutes of this first quarter. And Akron will start at the 25. Big drive here for the Zips. DJ Irons, the quarterback, back on the field. Yeah, and, and unfortunate. We, we talked about his injury a little bit last week. You know, he's a heck of a runner. He's a great athlete, big kid, 6'6", six, six, thick. And, and when you face an, um, a superior opponent, you need an extra hat. And the quarterback run is that extra hat. And the fact that he's banged up a little bit really hurt the game plan heading into this game versus Tennessee and going to limit what this offense can do. His running back is Clyde Price, the third high snap. Irons corrals it, throws on the run toward the sideline. That's a great pass and a first down. Akron connects with Tony Grimes for 16 yards. And that's good to see him moving well outside the pocket. That's what they need to do a little bit more. Just get him outside. Nice, clean vision, clean pocket. No one's in his face. He's not worried about someone taking his legs out. He's able to drive the ball to the sideline. Mm. Grimes in motion, another pre-snap flag against the Zips. False start, offense number 55. Five yard penalty. That's Wigan again, the right guard. Six penalties in the first quarter for Joe Moorhead's team. And it's so funny, I mean, you, you watched the tape last week against Michigan State. I'm like, oh, man, they're, they're driving and they're passing the 50 yeah. yard line. They're running, they're passing. And then, I mean, they're a penalty or a, a turnover and they just can't get out of their own way. First down and 15 for Irons. Another high snap. They give it to Price, the Kansas State transfer, and he is swarmed at the line of scrimmage. But Aaron, going back to your point, going back to last week, they go into East Lansing. Final score is ugly, 52-0. But consider in the first quarter, they were moving it. They had about 150 total yards of offense in the opening quarter. Irons goes down in the second quarter. They turned it over three times in the first quarter. I mean, aside from those mistakes and injuries, they were hanging with the Spartans for a little bit. Under five to play in the first. They swing it out. 
to the running back Price, and he's going nowhere. Dumped by Jalen McCullough for a loss on second down. It'll set up third and forever. And Jalen's doing a great job coming down from that safety position. That's the second time we've seen him make big plays. And the thing is, for this Tennessee defense, they see an offense like this all spring, all summer, all fall camp. You want to spread us out. You want to throw quick bubbles and screens to the outside. Our safeties know how to take proper angles in order to make tackles in the backfield. Third down and 20. Irons looks right side. Plants, throws, incomplete. Put it on the hands of his top wideout, Shockey Jacques Louis. Couldn't bring it in, and we've got some extracurriculars after this after the play. That was Tyler Barron who went down. And there was a lot of pushing and shoving with two flags. Yeah, right tackle. Nate Williams not too happy. And that's 102,000 people booing. This could be punitive. We might have an ejection. Tyler Barron hit the deck. There were a couple zips, couple vols involved. It was in the backfield. Come on now, there's not going to be an ejection. This is football. <laughs> there's not, they're not that soft. No, I don't think there's any punches thrown. All right, so it was Barron who applied the pressure. Then you've got Williams riding Byron Young. Barron steps in, says, hey, get away. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably. And you can tell DJ. DJ was trying to uh, irons the quarterback, trying to. All right, so we'll have a roughing the passer, and then a personal foul after the play. Ejection from the game. Come Two on. Two fouls on the play. A live ball foul. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number nine. Fifteen yard penalty. Previous spot. Automatic first down. After the play was over. I think that's the right call, right? Cleaned it up well. Yeah, we're going to see Barron. Ah. Once again, I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily see the penalty on the roughing the passer. But you know what? Quarterbacks are soft. We like to take care of them. <laughs> I'm not going to be too mad about it, but I, I didn't really see that one right there. And obviously, I completely agree with, with what Nate Williams did after the, after the play there. You can't do that. Well, because of the roughing, it is a first down Akron. Remember, it was third down and 20, and the pass was incomplete. And I think what happened there, partners, I just got caught up in the 102K mm -hmm. all booing. They probably were cheering for the yeah. ejection. You, you wanted him to be walked off the field <laughs> in cuffs. Shame. Yeah, shame. shame. <laughs> Came with throne style. Yes. <laughs> all right, under four minutes here in the first. An unlikely first down for Akron after the rough in the passer as Irons is back in the gun with Price as running back. And the Kansas State transfer gets the call again, trying to go up the gut, but he's going nowhere. Byron Young, the all-SEC DN, comes in there to stop it. Well, it's hard to run going against a bare front, so you're going to have a head-up nose, two, three techniques, and two outside guys on the outside, two fives, and it's just it's, it's man on man. Uh, you essentially create five single matchups between the offense and defensive line, and it makes it really, really tough to run the football, especially when you're outsized. And Tennessee varying up the fronts. You see it here even. Mm, bringing some pressure now off the edge. Tough to tell who's coming. Irons has to get rid of it on the screen. This could be money for the Zips. It's Jacques Louis. Hit the right stick with a juke move. He's brought down after a gain of nine. Close to the marker. Set up third down and short. And that's, that's, that's the play you want. You throw, we always talk about throwing in the pressure. Pressure's coming off the edge. But Collins coming in there. Great job by DJ Irons. Being able to change his arm angle up to get the ball to the outside. And you know, for, for the Zips, they were gifted, in my opinion, a first down with the roughing the passer. We'll see if they can get two in a row here. Second time out of the first half, and this place is pumping. One oh one nine fifteen is the number. It's the first non-conference sellout here since 2015 against Oklahoma. Josh Heupel's alma mater. 
And the first sellout against a non-Power 5 opponent since August of 2014 against Utah State. But combine the fact that this is one of Tennessee's best team in teams in years, a top 15 team, and the folks came out. Now, this is a sellout. If you go back to 2015 against Western Carolina, the capacity was a little higher after some renovations to make this place a little more modern. The capacity is 101-915, and <laughs> every seat is filled as far as I can tell. I'm telling you, the first time when you come to the stadium, it literally looks like the Roman Coliseum on steroids. You're like, wow, like this, it's, it is what it is. And uh, you get in here and you see it, all the orange and white, and it's a sight now. Another third down for the Zips. Irons in the gun, gives it to Cam Wiley, and he has wrestled down in the backfield. There's Jeremy Banks making his presence felt. Another all-SEC defender for Tennessee. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing on the right side of the offensive line. They should be double-teaming up to Banks right here, and they, they get stuck on the defensive end. Double-team, get to the second level, and Banks like, all right, fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm perfectly okay if you don't want to touch me. Free lane to the back. Another TFL for this defense. Not the guy you want to leave unblocked. Last year, 128 tackles, second in the SEC behind Damone Clark of LSU. Another fair catch of the 20 by Trayvon Flowers. And that's where Tennessee will set up shop after the 46-yard punt. Hendon Hooker came to play tonight, Aaron. Oh, he comes to play every night. He's a special quarterback. And if you want to back up in coverage, he's going to show you and, and, and punish you with his legs and then the ability to be an athlete. And then the long pass, finding Squirrel one-on-one -on -one the outside. Little Squirrel making a play. We'll talk about athlete. I was watching the quarterbacks do their, their, their warm-ups before the game, and they're out there doing one-handed catches in the back of the end zone. They're dunking on the pylon. Oh. Things that I only dreamed about doing in my life, <laughs> making it look easy. Him and, uh, him and Joe Milton having some fun out there. Hooker, a sixth-year senior. Might actually be a 35-year-old man named Mike Honcho. Some Tennessee baseball fans will appreciate that reference. On first down, they set up the screen, far sideline, short gain. It was Jimmy Calloway, number nine, the wide receiver. Tony. Three yard gain on first down. Second down and seven. Hooker, another short pass to that side. And a flag comes in late. Again, it was Calloway. And we'll check the penalty. Yeah, pass interference on McCoy again. Yeah, since the ball was complete, pass the line of scrimmage. He cannot block until it's caught. And Yeah, he's a big kid. I think he was just still trying to get open, and, you know, unfortunate for him, they're looking out for that stuff. They know Tennessee wants to get the ball out quickly, and it's just a timing thing. If the ball's out just a split second too late, you're going to get caught for those penalties. That was Nate Thompson, the safety for Akron, making back-to-back -back tackles. Sets up second down and 19. And you see the ball spread it out, boundary to boundary, with four wide receivers. A lot of space on that right side up the seam. Hooker looks to throw over the middle, feathered it in there nicely. Another catch, three in a row for Jimmy Calloway near the marker at the 30. That's a 17-yard gain on second down. That's a great job throwing with anticipation from Hendon Hooker right off the linebacker's helmet. Third down and short with under a minute in the first quarter. Jalen Wright got tripped up by the shoestring. And he's brought down near the line to gain. That's a great job. Akron actually going to a bare front defensive line. Linebacker was able to get around, skirt around the offense to make the play. And hey, man, listen, we talked about it earlier. Like, you're bigger, you're stronger, you're Tennessee. You make a statement in this situation, especially when you had a big quarterback. All right, fourth and one from inside their own 30. Tennessee goes for it, and Wright cashes in. He sidestepped a couple of zips. The play clock was stuck at 40 as the game clock wound. 
Josh Heupel threw caution to the wind said we're going for it and they moved the chains. UT is now three of three on fourth down and that takes us to the end of the first quarter. Injured zip is KJ Martin. Jogs off under his own power and it's 14 nothing Tennessee after 15 Hendon Hooker and co on the move again. Welcome back to Rocky Top. Knoxville Tennessee where the Vols lead 14 nothing over the Akron Zips as we take you to the second quarter. Drew Carter Aaron Murray Ashley Strohlein with you from Nealon Stadium a sold out Nealon Stadium almost 102,000 Vols fans. Tennessee went for it on the final play of the first quarter on fourth down. They picked it up They're three for three on fourth down already 15 minutes in. Jalen Wright is the running back next to Hendon Hooker. Motion man the tight end Princeton Fant. They give it to Wright around the left side makes a man miss and picks up a first down. Andrew Bame finally brought him down after a gain of 13. And that's a great job by Carvin and Mincy on the left side crashing down. And Tennessee will waste no time with this up tempo offense. Open man for Hooker. And the money. Jalen Hyatt. Touchdown, Tennessee. <laughs> 57 yard house call. Cue up. Rocky Top again. I swear they run this play over and over and over again, but they do it to perfection because Hyatt and these guys understand that, hey, if a DB's on top of me, I'm going to turn this wheel route into a comeback. And if I beat him and have a step, I'm just going to use my speed and I'm gone. See you later. And we all know Hendon can let that thing fly. Chase McGrath adds the extra point. 21 nothing Tennessee. How's this for a deep ball, partner? Hey man, he threw it on time, in rhythm, wheel route, little bit of what we call a rub, interference, wide open. Hyatt for a big touchdown, 21 nothing. All good for the Tennessee offense and Hendon Hooker. Three touchdown drives after they started with a missed field goal. A minute 52, a minute 49, two minutes and four seconds on four seconds on that last one six plays 80 yards so that really they took the foot off the gas pedal ending with a 57 yard touchdown from Hendon Hooker to Jalen Hyatt. <clears throat> Drew Carter Aaron Murray Ashley Strohlein back with you from a sold out Nealon Stadium. Paxton Brooks out to kick it away. Jockey Jacques Louis, the pitch transfer. Deep to receive for the Zips. Dynamic receiver and punt returner and kick returner will take it out from his own goal line outside the 20. And he is stood up inside the 25. Hendon Hooker is balling, Ashley. What you got? Uh, well, how about Jalen Hyatt? We had a chance to talk with him, learn a lot about who he is as a football player, but something else he takes pride in, that's game day fashion. Jalen told us he has a, a custom place he goes to in Atlanta, Georgia. Anthony Mason, he spends time in the offseason going there, getting fitted for the mm. suits that he wears on game day. And Aaron and Drew, you guys know a little bit about game day fashion, right? Not like that. <laughs> I got to step my game. I need to figure out where he goes to in Atlanta because... I'm in Atlanta. I got to start looking a little bit better. Yeah. Showing us up here in the booth. Anthony Mason, if you're listening, hit up Aaron Murray. First play of a new drive for Akron. I could use a nice NIL, NIL deal. <laughs> I mean, I'll take an NIL deal all day. Listen, you didn't get to cash in when you were in college. No. So retroactively, why not? Give me something. Tell you what, you know, if you're a Tennessee fan, you are super excited about this defensive line and this front seven. We know they're talented. But it's the depth, and we're going to continue to see that throughout the season. And especially when you get into SEC games, you got to be able to rotate guys in. You got to keep those legs fresh, and they have that depth right now. Yeah, Tim Banks loves this defense. They were living in the backfield last week at Pitt. Here's second down and 10 for DJ Irons. Ooh. Nice throw, stood in the pocket, completed it to Shockey Jacques Louis out to the 40 yard line for a first down Akron. Oh, and DJ has time. I mean, he can rip it. He can rip it. He's big kid, 6'6", 205, strong, 
great base inside the pocket. It's just a time issue. I mean, that's that's all. It's, you can say that about majority of quarterbacks around the country, though. When we have time in the pocket, chances of us having success and feeling comfortable and being able to drive the throw, balls are going to be a lot more accurate. Fresh set for the zips. Keep it on the ground. Cam Wiley, the running back. Transfer from Minnesota, three years with the Gophers. Short gain on first down. Solon Page, 38, and Big Orange is there on the tackle. It was interesting when, when talking with Moorhead and, and Fessler, the offensive coordinator, you know, they really weren't sure who the quarterback was going to be this week, and, and both of them are very different, DJ Irons and, and Jeff Undercuffler. And... They kind of had a game plan to, you know, we want to be able to run the football. We want to be able to add that extra hat with the quarterback run. But, you know, Jeff really isn't the runner, and, and DJ's a little bit banged up right now. So they're trying to have to be creative with a lot of these jet sweeps and motions. Right on cue. That's what they do. Irons has to get rid of it on the screen. They set it up for Wiley, who had some daylight. Balls close it quickly. It'll set up third down and two, and this place will get juiced up again. At least the 50-yard line is probably the safest place to be on third down in the stadium. You start getting inside the 20s, and good luck. <laughs> good luck. It's even louder there. Irons high snap has to spin away from pressure. Nice play from the QB to swing it out to the running back Wiley for a first down. And we've seen a few of these high snaps, which is no one's going to allude to his height. He's 6'6". So if you're going to get, you're forcing your quarterback to jump at 6'6", that ball is, it's up there. And, and we're seeing once again DJ's ability to throw the ball accurately on the run. And we're going to see more and more of that today. Just protect him, a little bit banged up, get him on the run, get him on the move. Especially to his right, he's accurate. He's a guy who can hang at this level. Last year at Auburn, he was 13 of 13 for 129 yards and a touchdown. The problem is he was in a three man quarterback rotation. And was not the full time starter as Akron burns its final timeout of the first half. And if you want to know what 102,000 screaming Vols fans can do, that's it. They're out of timeouts. We'll take the timeout with them. Joe Moorhead zips are across midfield trying to chip into this lead. Uh, Joe Moorhead, the head coach for Akron, calling the plays on offense against Tim Banks, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee. These two dudes know each other pretty well. They overlapped for two years at Penn State, 2016 and 2017. You check it out. These two guys have a lot of history. We asked them both about it. Moorhead said those dang defensive coordinators always trying to get ahead of us in the chess match. Tim Banks' wife actually texted Joe Moorhead's wife the other night just to check in, and they both say the same thing. They want the best for the other guy. They hope it goes really well for them at their stop, just not tonight. Moorhead's offense with first down and 10 past the power T at the 50-yard line here at Nealon Stadium. DJ Irons, their quarterback, started 2 of 5 ever since he's 6 of 6. The Juco transfer finding a groove. Motion man is Tristan Brank, the tight end. Irons in the shotgun with Cam Wiley, the running back. Irons with plenty of time, throws over the middle, cuts it loose and finds Shockey Jacques-Louis again. Trayvon Flowers, the safety, blew him up, but a long gain of 22 and a nice throw from Irons again. Well, we got to give credit to the offensive line. I mean, DJ had all day in the pocket. I mean, that's a long developing route concept. You got a post coming from up top, a deep, deep cross coming from right to left, and he's able to send the pocket very comfortably and find his number one target for a big gain. Irons has hit on his last seven passes. Now at the 25, Irons on the jet sweep to Alex Adams. Another transfer in this Akron offense pushed out of bounds by Kamal Haddon after no gain maximum for the Zips. Adams, the LSU transfer. Awesome. 
Well, this is the point last week versus Michigan State. They were feeling, you know, moving the football and then a fumble or an interception and silly penalties. So can they stay focused? Can they learn from those mistakes last week? Find a way to put some points on the board here in the second quarter. Jacques Louis in motion. Irons another high snap out of the gun. Floats it over the middle. Adams has it, but dragged down after a short gain on second down. Man, he had Jacques Louis too. Motion, running the wheel route, had a step on the defender. And DJ just wasn't sure if the other safety over top was going to come off of his receiver to make a play in the ball, but had an opportunity to fire it in there for a possible touchdown. Made the safe decision just to check it down. It's a nice play by Deshaun Rucker on the tackle to set up third down and seven. Irons alone in the backfield. Now brings Wiley back with him. Good luck trying to audible in this place right now. Five seconds on the timer. Irons looks over the middle complete again to Adams on the crossing route, but he dropped it. Spoke too soon. He put it right on the numbers for the LSU transfer who couldn't squeeze it. And they love these crossing routes. Anticipating pressure, middle of the field's wide open. And just, I know it's a big moment and a big crowd and a big stadium. But if you want to make this game competitive, you have to make plays when they're there. You got to hold that in to be able to get the first down. They bring on Corey Smeagle for a 40 yard attempt. He's only one for three this year with a long of 25. The kick is sailing left. No good. A solid drive for Akron. Comes up empty. Still 21-0 Tennessee. And the Vols offense is coming back when we come back. Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Thinking Out Loud is back for another season with Spencer Hall and Richard Johnson. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron, talk about the hottest topics for the coming week, and preview Saturday's biggest games right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Plenty to, to discuss this upcoming Monday, including some scores and in games in progress. Uh, last we checked, Arkansas is losing 17 zip against their former coach Bobby Petrino and Missouri State, an FCS team. We'll keep tabs on that. First play of a new drive for Tennessee is a short gain for Dylan Sampson. The true freshman running back, Jalen Hooks, on the tackle. Hendon Hooker and company have been rolling with three straight touchdowns in a row, and that pass is caught by Cedric Tillman, but he put it on the deck. Curtis Harper has the recovery. Should be Akron ball. I don't think we have a ruling just yet. Curtis Harper has the ball for the zips, and it is Akron football. Oh, let's see when 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 his knee goes down, Tillman. Ooh. It's a bang bang play. Maybe his keister was down? Yeah, maybe. Let's down. Down. Oh, that's real it's, close. It's, it's bang bang, but the left keister, as you were referring to, mm -hmm. was was down, I believe. But so these are these are good moments to teach, man. You always someone's always coming behind you. You gotta tuck it away for Cedric Tillman. But I you see three Let's and white here. Pause Zach it right Morton. now. Ball, yep. He balls ball still in hand. Heck of a play for Morton though. Oh yeah. Regardless. Yeah. And, and how about this partner? Zach Morton forces the fumble. Syracuse transfer. Curtis Harper recovers it. Syracuse transfer. It makes you happy, my, my Syracuse man. Which congratulations, Syracuse. Thank big, you. Big win today. Thank you. Was Never gift, a doubt. This gifted it a little bit in the fourth <laughs> quarter. Never a doubt. All right, so they'll take a look at this. We've already been looking at it. I think we concur up here that Cedric Tillman was down for just a split second before 
He fumbled the rock. By the way, that's Tillman's first catch tonight. Kind of surprising. I mean, he's a ball hog usually. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, they, they came into this wanting to get Brew McCoy involved early. We've seen them go at him a couple times. You know, Jalen has been just tremendous this year. It just his work ethic, the coaching staff telling us, and 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 his ability to now attack leverage, they feel like is his biggest difference. Being able to understand leverage of a defender and how that works within the route concept and the overall scheme of the play and then being able to go out there and execute. So I think that's a good thing, you know, to, to be able to score 21 points here already in this game and and not involve Tillman as much is telling me that, hey, this team can run the football. There's other weapons on the outside. Big, big plus as we take another look and see if the right tush was down or not. <laughs> I like to say tush. Heine? Left tush, left tush, excuse me. And left Aaron, tush. Yeah, I think it's... Down. Yeah. 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 No. Well, if Cedric we, Tillman were a little more thick with two C's, there would be no question here. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We uh, three for three for the night with, with calls, I think. Let's find out. We're on the same page with Ken Williamson tonight. Yep. I tell you what, it's, it's not a good feeling when, when Cedric, when they go watch the film, whether it's tomorrow or Monday, and it, it just drives, lack of ball security always drives a coaching staff crazy. You protect, it's a baby, man. You, you wrap that thing up, especially when you're going down in traffic, and you work on it pre-practice, you work on it post-practice, and I'm sure they're going to make sure he's ready to go come next week so that mistake doesn't happen. It's been an issue for Tennessee through two weeks, one of the few issues for this 2-0 and team. Jalen Wright, the running back, has fumbled in both games. Here's Hendon Hooker throwing to the right side. That's caught again. It's Tillman again. Back-to-back -back catches for the All-SEC wideout, but he's down in a heap. And that is not a good sign. Vols are already missing Jabari Small, their starting running back. And now one of the best receivers in America is down on the grass here at Neyland Stadium. We've got 102,000 concerned Tennessee fans for Cedric Tillman. We'll update the injury mm. when we come back. So the Tennessee fan base holding its collective breath because that man Cedric Tillman, 1,000-yard receiver last year and one of the best in the SEC, undercut, awkwardly landed on the last play, back-to-back -back catches for Tillman. He heads to the medical tent, and for Josh Heupel, that could be a huge loss as we go back and look at this. Uh, you hate to see this in a game like this with, with the opponent you know that's coming into town next week and lots of prayers up that he's okay and, and nothing major. Yeah, they've got Florida here next week at Neyland Stadium. As you keep it on the ground, this time with the freshman Dylan Sampson and the speedster right up the gut, dragging Zips inside the 35. It was Nate Thompson and Jalen Hooks who teamed up to finally make the tackle. Well, his patience inside the hall for Sampson to just wait, allow things to develop, and then we talk about the speed, be able to hit it, get to that second and third level for the big gain. It was a gain of 26, sets up first down and 10. Hooker with time, now eludes the rush with a flag on the field. He threw a bullet. It was too tall for his intended target, Ramel Keaton. Pressure applied by Bubba Arcelanian, the three-time captain for Akron. And then Hendon just been a little bit high today in this game. Personal foul, hands the face, defense number 55. 50, automatic first down. That's Kyle Thomas, the nose tackle. Yeah, it's a one critique from last week to this week. Throws a great deep ball. It's it's a thing of perfect. A couple times today was a little bit late on him, but you know some of these comeback throws and balls around 10, 15 yards tend to sail a little bit. So on the left side of your screen there, a 75, the left guard, Jerome Carvin. Got a couple hands to the mug. Eighth penalty against Akron in this first half. I'll be ready for they brought a blitz in the red zone last week. We call it the pipe blitz. It's a cross dog blitz to the linebackers and the safety down the middle. I think they're checking out of it. First down and 10. Hooker throws a dart left side. There's Jalen Hyatt with another catch. 
He had a 57 yard touchdown earlier. Rashad Hentz in there on the stop for the Zips. You always got to be prepared as soon as you get inside the red area. Bring in pressure from this defense. This time they keep it on the ground. It's the freshman again, Samson. Short gain on second and five. Sets up third and about three. Nate Thompson in there for Akron to bring down the freshman out of Baton Rouge. Oh, with their luck so far, I wouldn't say luck, but skill and fourth down conversions. Again on the ground, again it's Samson Swarm. Thompson in there first again for Akron. Yeah. And you called it, partner. Let's see. Yeah, it's this good situational football to work on in the red zone. They're going to man them up, see if we can get some sort of rub play. Oh, cover zero. They're bringing the Saul Dog. Two players off the edge. See if they check out of it. Now that Tennessee kind of has a feel for what's going on. They're three for three on fourth down already in this first half. Hooker has completed 10 straight passes. Midway through the second quarter, fourth down and four. Tennessee goes for it. Speed option again. Sampson again. Touchdown again. If you don't know the name, Dylan Sampson before tonight. No, you once, better recognize. Yeah. Hey, once again, speed option, and they're going to bring the all-out blitz, and it's, you know, it's an easy read for Hendon Hooker. It's, it's just plain pitch. It's one defender left. Once again, Nate Thomas, Thompson, excuse me, he wants to crash on the quarterback. You get to the speedster and the speed option, and he's going to walk it in for a second touchdown. Chase McGrath adds the extra point. The speed option was built for a guy like Dylan Sampson, who runs a 10-3 in the 100 meter. Oh, and Hendon, too, who reads it so clearly. I mean, you see, that's all he's reading right there. Everyone else is inside the box. Offensive line does a great job getting to that second level. Big shout out to the offensive line there. Isaac Green, the right tackle, getting up to the linebacker. And then from there, it's just easy. Hendon taking a shot down there below two. But that's a go-to call. Anytime you're in a bear defense and all-out blitz, you know everyone's coming down, and there's just going to be one defender on the outside. You check speed option, and then it's just a matter of the quarterback making the right decision. And Hendon's two for two on that play tonight, both times resulting in touchdowns. That is five Rocky Top so far as we sit here midway through the second quarter. Smokey was loving it. The 102,000 are loving it here at Nealon Stadium. Dylan Sampson with a couple of touchdowns tonight. The true freshman out of Baton Rouge. He says he models his game after Reggie Bush. He's a big Saints fan, and he showed you the speed around the edge that time. Paxton Brooks kicks it away. And Akron will take the touchback. Now Blake Hester almost stepped out of the end zone before he did. So the fans here just wanted to be certain that that's a touchback and not a safety. Listen, my man, just catch the ball and put it knee down. Or wave your hand at me. He's going to step on the line right there. Ball did not cross. All right, couple injuries for Tennessee. Let's go down to Ashley with an update. Yeah, guys, receiver Cedric Tillman walked off the field and into the tent on his own. He came out of the tent and said, I'm good. But I can tell you he has a lower body injury and he is out for the remainder of the game. All right, good stuff, Stroh, but that's great news for yep. Tennessee if Tillman says he's good because it did not look good when he went down. Game, game, game. Offense, so Akron's out of timeout, so when this place gets real loud, they can't freeze it. Ah, uh, you, you, you just drives you freaking nuts when you get to lay a penalty on the first play of the drive. Like, you know the play. You're coming off the sideline. Get up to the line of scrimmage, snap the ball, but going back to the report, you know, great news and not surprised at all. You know, just put him on the bench, give him some ice, let him relax, and, and 
Give him the rest of this game to get ready for next week. First and 15 for DJ Irons and Akron throws it over the middle. Incomplete. Uh. Couple of flags. Trying to find Tony Grimes, Jalen McCullough, the fourth year starter at safety in coverage. Oh, his first mistake of the night. He's been tremendous, whether it's coming in the box, blitzing, taking down receivers in the flat. And he gets called for being a little bit too aggressive on the back end. Holding. They didn't give us a number. Assuming that was yeah, McCullough. I'm, I'm, yeah. Making his 30th start at Tennessee. He's appeared in every game since arriving in Knoxville. Look at DJ Irons. <laughs> Trying to figure out where the ball is spotted. They've got it at the 30. As Akron tries to get on the board here, down 28-0. Irons, the redshirt junior out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, takes the snap on first and ten, throws right mm. side. It's another bullet. This guy's got a great arm, and again, it's Jacques Louis, his top receiver for a first down. I'm telling you, man, in, in the world of the transfer portal, and you see you know, DJ Irons, 6'6", 205, he looks the part. You're not seeing him run the ball tonight because of the injury to that right leg. But, my man, he can rip it, and, you know, a lot of people are going to be looking at free agency next year, what we like to call free agency, the portal. <laughs> he may be moving around a little bit. I'd be going after him. He's completed 10 of his last 11 passes. He'll throw again, make it 11 of 12 as they set up the screen and a solid gain on first down. That's Daniel George, the transfer from Penn State, finally brought down by Jalen McCullough. Yeah, had a career high four catches last week in their ball game versus Michigan State. and. That's what you want to do. You're, this is a Tennessee team that wants the pressure. If you catch a minute with one of these screens, you're going to get a big play. Into Tennessee territory. Irons on first down. Plenty of time. Nice throw over the middle. Cannot convert to Tony Grimes. To Marion McDonald playing that star position for Tennessee on the coverage. And there's Tyler Barron. Another all SEC performer who's down on the grass at Neyland Stadium and Tennessee fans have got to be thinking enough already. Yeah. <laughs> not, it, not, not with what what is looming next week. Just let's just get out of here feeling good and, and healthy and ready to go. So once again, just like we've seen a couple other injuries tonight from this Tennessee football team, Jabari, Cedric, the last possession there, and then out Barron. Tyler Barron, an outstanding DN for this Tennessee defense. Last week at Pitt, a couple tackles for loss in a strip sack. And we hope he's okay. That's a good sign. Hopping up. I wonder what now Heupel is just talking to his coordinators. You know, because they, they go into a plan. You know, listen, it's, let's be realistic here. You go into this game thinking, hey, let's get through the first half. Maybe we'll make those adjustments. You come out third quarter, you give a series, and then we'll start working some of these backups, depending if things are going to what we expect them to go to. And uh, I'm sure that's the conversation being had right now. Like, hey, guys, this, if we stay like this, put these guys on the bench. Let's get some of the young guys out here. Put them in an ice bath. That too. On second down and 10, Irons to throw. Again, he's got space, and he will use it to the right side. Look at the speed from a guy who left with a leg injury last week. He looks good on that one, picking up a first down around the right side. He looked good. Not as smooth as he has the first two weeks. You can tell there's a, there's a slight limp to his run. I mean, if he's 100% healthy, I think he's turned the corner there for a bigger gain. But you see the athleticism. Nothing's open. Great job on the back end from Tennessee. See a little bit of a hitch. I'm with you, partner. In the transfer portal, this guy's going to be a hot commodity. Uh, Joe, Joe Moorhead's going to come find me after this game for saying that. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm just being realistic. I, I'd go after him. 
He'll throw again this time swings it out short completion. Found Cam Wiley the running back for a short game to Mary and McDonald again in there on the stop. But going back to high school he played at Grayson which is a powerhouse in Georgia. DJ Irons was the 7A offensive player of the year in the state of Georgia. They've got some talent in yep, that state. They do got some talent and he's athletic basketball player. And they said his mental the, the mental side of his game is taking such a, a huge leap heading into the season able to get his eyes and feet in the right place dissecting defenses and getting to the right receiver. Second down and seven irons to throw right side this time he cuts it loose has an open man and a completion to Adams inside the five. So the Georgia native finds the LSU transfer for 23 yards and great job by Adams staying in bounds. Probably could have given his quarterback a little bit more room. But they're going to fake the screen wheel route on the outside. Tennessee a little bit quiet man 102,000 people this is what you want them to start getting up on their feet getting out getting loud exercise those vocal cords. First and goal from the five irons back in the gun Wiley gets the call and he gets crunched. Jeremy Banks came in there to deliver the boom. And that's a heck of a job by Jeremy Banks coming around wrapping around the left side of that offensive line to make the TFL. Now this is what you would want for Akron the ability to have some sort of design run for DJ Irons and, and maybe the fact that he ran the ball just a few plays ago gives his coaching staff a little bit more confidence to dial up something for him to add that extra hat inside the box. Under 10 on the play clock. Irons in the gun. They set up the double reverse and a little space for the George ball is loose on top of the orange and white checkerboard in the end zone. Who's got it? Tennessee says they do. The fans are fired up. Latrell Bumpus on the fumble recovery. He's got the rock. And this should be Vols football. And Jeremy Banks, we keep saying his name, but my man's making plays, does a great job putting his right shoulder on the football to knock it out. Great job, no targeting, think that's completely clean. But he puts his shoulder pad on the football. It's bumper cars in there. That thing had a mind of its own. <laughs> I mean, he, he's just bouncing around. Is Daniel George just, and then all of a sudden, out comes the football. So Banks forces it. Bumpus recovers it. Tennessee ball. And that is a vibe killer for Akron. They had a great drive going. Eight plays, 75 yards, almost four minutes inside the five, and they cough it up. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's Michigan State all over again from last yeah. week. I mean, this just has to be driving Coach Moorhead crazy. You, you, you watched the film last week. Guys, we got to protect the football, especially in the red area. you got to get points. And it, it's turnovers, it's penalties, it's missed field goals. and. Yeah, they lost three fumbles in the first half last week. Jalen Wright's the running back alongside Hendon Hooker. Under three to play in this first quarter. They set up the screen to Brew McCoy, and the USC transfer is out of bounds near the first down marker. And that's not a boo. I believe that's a brew. I think you're right. I'm pretty sure it's a brew. It's a good feeling for him. But it's an opportunity for him. They want to get him more snaps. On second and one, they give it back to Jalen Wright. Sheds a tackle, sheds another, drags a zip past the 45. Andrew Bame finally hauled him down. Gain of 17. We'll go back to, to McCoy a little bit too and, and never wish injury on anyone, but the goal was to get him more opportunities to touch the ball in this game. And with Cedric out for most likely the remainder of this game, you're going to see him targeted a lot more. Fresh set. Back to right, sifting his way through the line into Akron territory. Tackled by Nazir Sai after a gain of nine as we approach two minutes to play in the first half. And that's a great job by right guard Spragans, double teaming it up to that second level. 
from the Akron 45 the snap will have to wait. Flag on the field. All start. Offense number 80. Five yard penalty. And so wide out Ramel Keaton. Tennessee's got all three timeouts but at the pace they run their offense probably don't need them with two minutes mm. left. They're always in two minute drill. That's 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 just I mean, with with how fast they run it which is great because you know at the end of the day situational football is key in this league and to be able to be a master of two minutes a big big deal. Back to Jalen Wright on the ground shoestring tackle and a good one for Akron halts him after a short game. Guess who Bubba Arcelanian the sixth year senior in there again. Now third down for Tennessee with 90 seconds left in the second quarter. No rush here. The fastest offense in the country. A minute 15 is a plenty of time for them. They've been loving these under routes from the number one receivers on the outside. A lot of room. Hooker to throw on the slant. He's got Hyatt, and Hyatt's got space. Goodbye, number 11. Touchdown, Tennessee. Ton of space on the inside. But how spread out this offense is if you can we talk about with, with Hyatt what, what did he improve on this offseason understanding leverage and angles being able to, to attack a defender and that's prime example right there understanding where he is where the defender is attacking his inside shoulder breaking it across very friendly for the quarterback and then from there it's catch uses speed and it's a race to the end zone on the first pass of the drive for Tennessee it goes 48 yards to the house McGrath adds the extra point five plays 80 yards under two minutes again have a night Jalen Hyatt that's back to back weeks you see the confidence building and Hendon knew exactly where he's going a huge void in the inside of that defense and then my man's looking like a track star out there you want to talk about a confident group right now look at that pushes the Pushes the that nickel, gets vertical, gets him to come to the outside, and then breaks it right across his face. Shows his number for his quarterback, but confidence right now. Hyatt playing very confident football. Brew McCoy really picking up this offense. Tillman, we know how good he is. Squirrel right, the tight ends, the running backs. This offensive line's been dominant. This is. An offense as advertised, one of the premier in college football right now. Aaron, they've got speed in more ways than one. Every player is fast. They snap it fast. It is a sight to see. 35 zip. Tennessee with five straight touchdowns, five straight Rocky Tops. Paxton Brooks kicks it away. Hester receives this one. Just outside his own 10, and he's brought down inside the 25. So Akron has a lot of work to do. They've got a long way to go and a short time to get there with 51 seconds left and no timeouts. Once again, they, they've had their moments in this game, and, and just it's, it has to be frustrating for Akron fans watching and, and for those here, and then obviously the coaching staff and even the players. I mean, you just, it's almost like a, they're just teasing themselves. It's just you're moving and you're moving, and then something wrong goes. And, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit encouraging, too, to know that you went on the road last week to Michigan State. And I know the scoreboard doesn't show it, and the scoreboard obviously is not showing it here in the first half, but there's movement on the offense. Irons back to work, swings it out to the running back, Cam Wiley, for a gain of five on first down. Out of bounds, stops the clock at 46 seconds. Listen, Joe Moorhead is honest with us. He says he knows this is a big rebuild. You know, yep. They're not going to go undefeated in his first year, but Joe Moorhead is a guy who is a highly sought-after coach. He was the OC at Oregon for the last couple of years. Plenty of head coaching opportunities. Comes back to Akron, where, again, he spent five years in the 2000s. He's a Pittsburgh native, close to home. DJ Irons escapes the pocket, throws on the run. That's caught, and it's Shockey Jacques-Louis one more time. Near midfield, pushed out of bounds. 
by number 14, Christian Sharp. <laughs> He's getting a little feisty with hype on the side. I'm telling you, man. Transfer portal number one QB, let's go. Uh, sorry, Moorhead, once again, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I like this kid. I really do. We jest about the transfer portal. DJ Irons mm -hmm. told us he loves being at Akron. He wakes up and he thanks God every day yep. he's in that program. I'm sure he'll love playing the SEC, too. <laughs> That was a 22-yard pitch and catch. Irons to Jacques-Louis. Jacques up to six catches for 85 yards tonight. He only had one catch for six yards when he was playing for Pitt last year against Tennessee. First down and 10. Irons feels the heat again. Escapes again. Twisted down from behind by Josh Josephs, the guy who Tennessee is really excited about, adding some depth on this D-line. Clock still winds. 20 seconds now in the first half. No timeouts for the Zips. And they spike it from the shotgun. I haven't seen that before. Well, it's because these guys, some of these guys don't know how to be under center yeah. anymore. That's the problem. I mean, I've seen guys taking knees from the shotgun nowadays, and this is, this is the problem. You waste your timeouts early on in the half because of this tremendous crowd noise here tonight in Neyland, and yeah, you wish you had one or two to, to be able to save some time, but right now it's it's trying to get the ball to the sideline or get a first down and get get up there and clock it once again. But you got to get a first down most importantly right now. 35 nothing. it's still left. Third down and five. Here comes the heat again. Irons evades it, but just has to dump it. And that brings up fourth down and five. Eight seconds left in the second quarter. Yeah, you punt the ball here. Yeah. You, you, if there's any kind of mistake, you give Tennessee an opportunity to, to throw a Hail Mary and see what happens. And we've seen a Hail Mary work today for those who missed the App State game. Woo, baby. You want to talk about a Hail Mary? That's why you always have what we call a trailer, a guy that kind of lags behind when the ball is tipped. He's there to hopefully make a play on it. App State caught it. And uh, America's favorite team, App State, doing it <laughs> in a big way. That place is going to be crazy tonight. The team of destiny. Noah Getman out to kick it away to Trayvon Flowers. A little dummy receive on the punt. But it bounces inside the five, and that'll do it for the second quarter as Akron downs it there. Rocky Top has been played a bunch tonight. And Tennessee leads 35-0 after 30 minutes. Eight times. We're at eight times for Rocky Top. I think we're going to crack double figures. That's probably the safest bet of the night. Tennessee fresh off a huge road win. Double overtime at Pittsburgh. Is up 35-zip against the Zips of Akron. Josh Heupel is down on the field with Ashley. Well, Coach, unfortunately, two key players suffering injuries in that first half in Cedric Tillman and Jabari Small. Just your level of concern with them. I think both of them will be all right, uh, whether they return in this game or not. I'm not sure, but I uh, feel like they're good for the long run. Uh, and in Jabari's absence specifically, Dylan Sampson stepping up big time. How impressed are you with Tillman and just your young guys play? Yeah, uh, he's playing the way that we expected him to play, to be honest. Uh, when he's gotten opportunities, he's uh, handled himself like a mature vet. Uh, really good job in the run game, uh, delivering blocks and, and taking care on the ball and some pass pro too. You head into the locker room with a 35 to nothing lead at the half. Just what's your game plan coming out in the second half and how much can we expect to see the young guys get some experience? Uh, execute better than we did in the first half, clean some things up, um, you know, offensively run game, pass pro, some pass game, or uh, throw and catch uh, execution defensively. Uh, we're applying pressure to the quarterback. We want to see him uh, get him down. All right, coach, thanks. All right, thank you. All right, good stuff, Stro. Josh Heupel's team leads 35-0 at half over Akron. UT has been as advertised with five touchdowns in a row. University of Tennessee feeling good, up 35-0 over Akron. The Vols top 15 in the country after their win at Pitt in double overtime last week. So far, so good in their tune-up for their home game against Florida next week here at Neyland Stadium. Welcome back, everyone. Drew and Aaron up top. Ashley Stroline on the field as well. And 
Aaron, what do you think? I mean, after they missed a field goal on their first drive, yep. Tennessee scored five straight touchdowns. Well, as advertised, this is an elite offense, and they got playmakers all over. I love the the willingness to run the football, though, and we see it especially inside the red zone. Now, all of a sudden, defenses have to worry about them running it, throwing it vertically down the field, the quick passes. I don't know how you stop the offense. I really don't, and it's a lot of fun to watch, especially here in person in front of, uh, what, 102,000 yeah, people. Almost. And we heard some good news from Josh Heupel going to the locker room as well. Jabari Small and Cedric Tillman, he seemed positive about both of those guys, even though we won't see them again tonight as they lead 35-0. Those would be two huge losses, and so yep. it's good news for Tennessee. Yeah, it's huge news for those guys, and, and this is kind of what you want, and not the, obviously the injuries, but to get those guys out in the second half. You know, get them in, get them, you know, work on some things you want to work on heading into the Florida game next weekend. But let's get some of the backups in, get them experience, get them tape. Uh, and, and right now you're going to see a lot of that in the second half. And, you know, they're excited, especially on the defense side of the football, about the depth that they've created. Now you get those guys an opportunity to go out there and get some meaningful snaps. Yeah, we're going to be calling a lot of names for Tennessee in this second half. Now, one thing with the injury to Cedric Tillman is it's given Jalen Hyatt even more shine. He scored two touchdowns in that first half, both of them long. Well, he's a speed speed man, and, and wide open here on the wheel route. Had a play that set it up earlier with a wheel comeback, got on top, and then you see all the room to the inside. We talk about him being able to attack angles, and he did a great job right there on that inside slant, attacking the defender's angle, and then being able to go, and then, hey, you want speed? Get Dylan Sampson on the field. Speed option in the red zone. Hendon Hooker doing it to perfection, not just once. But twice, you're going to give me an all-out blitz. I'll read that outside defender, take the hit, and then a beautiful pitch to get in there for back-to-back -back touchdowns there for Sampson. Great night for him. Really excited about his future and his speed. Yeah, the true freshman runs about a 10-3 in the 100 meter. He is a real speedster. Check out the numbers. 416 total Ooh. yards. That'll get the job done for Tennessee. They broke all kinds of records last year. It seems like they do the same thing this year. 19 point three two yards in completion <laughs> almost two first downs per completion that's outrageous fourth down staying alive staying on the field four for four there uh, really jumps out as well no mercy for Akron of course four for four on fourth no down. mercy Josh no mercy try to bury him 35 zip second half is next But Tennessee has been lights out so far tonight at Neyland Stadium. And it's lit in here. It's a sellout. 101-915 is the number on attendance tonight on Rocky Top. First Saturday game of the season at UT, and the fans have come out accordingly. Five straight touchdowns for the Vols to end the first half. After a missed field goal on their first possession, they won the toss, elected to receive. So Akron will start with it in this third quarter. Drew Carter, Aaron Murray, Ashley Stroline back with you at a Pack Nealon Stadium. Paxton Brooks will kick it away for Tennessee. That's Shockey Jacques-Louis, the pit transfer wide receiver who lets it roll. Let's go down to Ashley. Well, guys, Coach Moore had obviously disappointed with the result of this first half, but he told me, look, this rebuild is no joke. We're going to go out here and use these next 30 minutes to get better, focus on the things we need to. He said, I told the guys, let's go out here. We can't be giving up these plays. We have to score when we get that close, including those field goals that they didn't take advantage of in the first half. Yeah, good call, Stro. They coughed it up inside the five-yard line. Same story as last week at Michigan State. Three lost fumbles in the first half in a 52-0 loss, which, folks, I promise you, was actually closer than the final score would indicate. I know that's a cliche, but they were moving the ball in the first quarter last week. DJ Iron starts with a completion to his running back, Cam Wiley, and the Minnesota transfer is knocked out of bounds by Kamal Hatton. Oh, and Irons now 18 of 24 in the game. Been very accurate on all of his throws. I love what they did with him in the first half, getting him on the move and some screens to get the ball out of his hands. 
Second down and short. Keep it on the ground with Wiley. Dives forward for a first down. Tyler Barron is in there on the stop. Good to see number nine and Orange back out there after he left with an injury in the first half. Good to see. Maybe a little surprising to see as well. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm, if, if the starters are in now, I'm thinking maybe one possession two at max just so you simulate going into halftime making adjustments coming out having to focus in on a series and then let's get the backups in yeah, that's what they did against Ball State in a game they handled the opener on a Thursday earlier this year pass complete by irons to Daniel George the Penn State transfer sets up second down and short notice a lot of big schools who have sent players to Akron in the transfer portal. Jacques Louis from Pittsburgh. In fact, Akron basically traded their top receiver, Kanata Mumfield, who's now with the Panthers, with Shockey Jacques Louis, who comes to Akron. George from Penn State. Alex Adams from LSU. Running backs from Minnesota and Kansas State. They've got big name schools on this roster. Irons on second down and four. Throws again to the running back, Wiley, ushered out of bounds by Banks near the marker. Right, it's funny talking with, with Coach Boarhead about the transfer portal, and he kind of breathed a sigh of relief when it was the announcement was made that you cannot transfer freely, so you can't just transfer one year, then transfer the next, because you know he didn't want some guys coming here to Akron, transfer in, ball out, then go back to, say, a Power 5 school. So, you know... It's good to be able to use it. I'm just worried about them losing guys as well to, to essentially be a farm system for, for Power 5 schools to come in and scoop some of these players up. Fresh set for Irons. Feels the heat. That Tennessee pass rush was dynamic last week at Pitt, and he just ices it. Well, we haven't seen as much pressure. I think last week first first Pittsburgh, they turned it up. You saw a couple in the first series, two cat blitzes or what they call corner blitzes coming off the edge lots of linebackers and safeties and tonight's been a little bit more vanilla you know more base defense stay in your spots at times dialed up but obviously nowhere to the extent that we saw last week in that big win versus Pittsburgh yes yeah, 16 quarterback hurries two pit quarterbacks were injured at different points of that game iron sets up the screen again with Wiley he sees an orange wall look out it's going to be a huge loss on second down and 10 finally finished off by Tamarian McDonald oh, Garland does a great job staying home being number 99 yeah, that's what you want to do versus a team that wants the pressure but not a pressure situation for Tennessee stayed home Ready for any sort of screen, tunnel screen to these receivers. One for six on third down in the first half. Irons to throw over the middle. Had his man overshot the tight end, TJ Banks. In between three balls, Trayvon Flowers, number one, almost hauled it in. Adam, too high. Wanted to attack the middle of the field. Would have loved to see Banks run through that catch, maybe see if he can get his hands on it. And that might be the last of the, uh, the, the the first team unit there for Tennessee. Come in, get off the field, and get out of the game. Score Ooh. away back deep to receive. They somehow got the punt off. What a play by Noah Getman. That is the highlight of the night for the Zips. Walker Merrill was in there trying to block it. Wow. Snazzy. <laughs> Okie doke. Punter got swag. <laughs> Somewhere in America, Pat McAfee is smiling on Noah Getman, the 6'5 senior out of Daytona Beach. Little hocus pocus. Now you see me. Now you don't. That was saucy. That's going to be a look at him. He, he's just so cool. <laughs> I mean, just so cool over yeah, there. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Flow. I look mean, at my hair. It's just really into the game, but it's a, uh, it's a real moment right there. Be on his social later tonight. Someone get Noah Getman a head and shoulders NIL deal. Some glorious lettuce. Hendon Hooker back to work for Tennessee offensively. The QB still in there along with 
Jalen Wright who gets the carries brought down by Nate Thompson after a short game. Yeah. Let's get him some more camera time. <laughs> just a, I just want one smile. Just one. <laughs> you, you did a pretty cool thing, kid. He'll be smiling when he sees his phone tonight. Second and seven. Hooker cuts it loose. Man is open. It's caught. Guess who? Jalen Hyatt again. 47 yard pitch and catch. Hyatt is unconscious tonight. Uh, just speed, speed, speed. And, and, and right now, you're so worried about him beating you to the inside because he had his last touchdown on a quick slant. So you got a little bit hesitant, and then he just steps on your toes, accelerates. And then, as we've we've talked about this entire night, Hendon's ability to throw the ball vertically down the field, one of the best out there. First down from the five. There's Jalen Wright trying to grind back to the goal line. He did that once in the first half. He'll be stopped about halfway there. K.J. Martin was in there first for Akron. I mean, you have to be feeling really good right now if you're Josh Heupel, knowing that the depth at receiver right now and the confidence that Hendon's showing in those guys. Hooker gives it back to right, makes one cut. He was stood up at the goal line. That's about as close as you can get without scoring. It was Bubba Arcelanian teaming up with Martin on the stop. Bubba's just everywhere. Uh, I mean, just any time there's a play made on this defense, he's involved. He's been fun to watch on that side. And we've got a timeout on the field for an injured zip in the end zone. I think the Tennessee fans here were a little up in arms saying Brian McCoy maybe is embellishing this injury. That's something that teams will be want to do against the fastest offense in the country. Snapping it every 20 seconds or so. to see McCoy walking off on his own. Quick recovery in the end zone. I think if there's any fan base that sees it more than anyone, it's going to be Tennessee with people with questionable going down at certain times. But it's until it gets called, you'll see more and more of it, unfortunately. The ball is on the about six inch line on third and goal. They're in the gun. Wright's the running back with Hooker. Hooker got blown up, but doesn't matter because Jalen Wright is in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. You know what I love after this play right here? You know, Hendon gets hit. One of his offensive linemen come over, I think it was Carvin, to, to kind of shove the defender. And, and what does Hendon do? He doesn't, he gets right in between it. He said, no, no, back up, man, back up. We're, that, that, that's not who we are. And it just shows you the level of maturity at, at, at his age and how much ball he's played. And he sees the promise of this football team. You learn, you know, you can't make those kind of silly penalties in any game. i love to see a, a leader go up there and do that on that touchdown run. Chase McGrath adds the extra point. Tennessee is in cruise control now, partner. Oh, they are in cruise control, and a big reason why. Hyatt, the track star, sign him up, making plays left and right inside the red zone. And this offense paving the way for another rushing touchdown. 42 0 Tennessee. Welcome back here to Knoxville, Tennessee. Jalen Hyatt with another great game, 166 yards on the night. And I had a chance to talk with him earlier in the week, and I said, Jalen, is there an impactful professor or teacher that you've had along the way that's just really made a difference? He said, well, actually, my mom and dad teach. They taught me in high school. My mom taught math. My dad taught English. And he says, I learned a lot from my mom. In fact, my most embarrassing moment came from being a student in her class. I walked in on my cell phone. She quickly put me in my place. But he said, I'll proudly say they have been the greatest impact on me. They're always there for me. And of course, it is Extra Yard for Teachers Week. It's an annual back to school effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to recognize and show appreciation to great teachers across the country. To support Extra Yard for Teachers, Recognition and Resources initiatives, 
Follow CFP Extra Yard or scan the QR code for more. And Aaron and Drew, as you know, I may have also spent a little time in the classroom. Yeah, we know for a fact you did, Stroll. My question for you as a former math teacher yourself, did you ever embarrass a kid on their phone coming into class? You know, sometimes you have to do that, right? And then they respect you a little bit more. So it's, you know, all, of, all out of good love, tough love there. That's right. That's right. Aaron, you ever get called out by a teacher? Oh, Hunter, well, the issue was, you know, we had the flip phones back That's in the right. day. So, like, trying, trying to, like, type on a flip phone is a lot harder to do. You can't yeah. be as sneaky with it. You've got the T9 mm -hmm. set up on the flip phone. The T9. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> That's a TBT. First down and 10 for DJ Irons in the Akron offense. Oh. Over the middle, incomplete. There's Jalen McCullough still in there on the breakup. You saw a flag come in. Look out. Irons talking a little bit with Aaron Beasley, the Tennessee linebacker. Clean hit right there. I'm not sure exactly what happened afterwards. Oh, break. <laughs> ah, I mean, there's that's that's. I'll check out the three tic tac penalties unless something was said. I uh, don't 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 like that one. Put put the flag back in your pocket. That was a very proper way to throw the flag as well, just kind of dropping it on the grass. Yeah. First down and 10 after the penalty. Jet sweep to Shockey Jacques Louis, the pit transfer. Four years with the Panthers, chopped up by Trayvon Flowers. Yeah, he's going to have a great. I mean, this, to me, this is, this is, it's a tough schedule. You know, you go on the road to two hostile environments. This one obviously being one of the most hostile in the, in the country. But I think for people, if you, you know, take away the score and just, you know, look at what they've done these past two weeks, like you, you've said it, I've said it, like there's talent on this roster. It starts with the quarterback, but they got some dudes at receiver too. They swing it out this time. And another solid gain on the screen for Tony Grimes. Out of bounds along that UT sideline. And that'll move the chains again. John Zell Norrells is the running back next to Irons. First time we've seen number six tonight. Irons stands in there, takes the punishment, mm. delivers the throw, caught again by Grimes. Irons is fired up. Josh Josephs came in to deliver the boom. 16-yard gain for number 16. Yeah, and Beasley once again taking a shot at him as well. And you just see the big 6'6 quarterback staying in there on the sail route. Transfer portal. Stop. Come on now. <laughs> That's so bad. Anyone watching in Northeast Ohio right now is furious with you. <laughs> He's talented. He is a talented quarterback. Yeah. He's a dude for sure. First down and 10 at the Tennessee 35. Irons throws another seed. That's broken up, but a flag flies. Now, Tennessee's got the football right now. Daniel George was the intended target. Yeah, it looked like Flowers got there just a hair bit too soon. Flowers with the big interception last week and then the sack in overtime versus Pittsburgh. Just a little bit too fast getting there on that corner route. Solon Page, 38, came away with it. I don't know if the ball ever hit the ground. No, I think it was an interception, but it's, it's going to be called pass interference. Pass interference, defense, Hilly will place the ball at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. A good chunk of that sellout crowd is still here at Neyland Stadium, displeased with the call. Yeah. A little premature. I mean, a little premature, but great job, Alicia. Practicing on the uh, the tip drill a little bit for his buddy to make the, the, the interception. But, yeah, I, I, I've been really impressed with Flowers. I mean, made... You know, got embarrassed a little bit last week with the hurdle against Pittsburgh, but was just making play after play after play. The interception, the, the big sack there to, you know, somewhat seal the deal in overtime. 
Five on the play clock. Irons takes the shotgun snap. Floats it. Left side. End zone. Incomplete. It was Tristan Brank who had it for a second, but the big tight end lost it. It's just, I don't know what it is, but when this team gets in the red zone or, you know, around the red zone, they're two yards outside, they just, they're just not making the plays. And we've seen drops on crossing routes. We saw the, 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 the fumble inside the five, and then now that one, beautifully thrown ball in the back of the end zone. Bank, Brank's got to bring that in there to be able to put some points on the board. It was an all-conference tight end last year, second team in the MAC. Couldn't bring in the touchdown. Akron still scoreless. Irons looks complete again. Big hit delivered. That's Alex Adams, the LSU transfer. Solon Page, 38 and Big Orange, made him pay. And that's a great job sitting down. And now, not 102 like it was to start the game, but still. A lot of orange here. Excited to be here tonight. Night game. The light show's going. And Akron, once again, another early timeout. I'm at Akron, first time out of the half. Yeah, some of the fans are at Calhoun's by now, but uh, there is still plenty in here for it to be charged up. This will be a 30 second timeout. Yeah, we, we tried to get to Calhoun's last night, and we're told that it's going to be about a two hour wait, so. <laughs> Don't think our luck will be any better tonight for that, yeah. that uh, the late night yeah. kickoff. Calhouns, if you're listening, please let us in. NIL deal for the ESPN crew. <laughs> we need, for we're looking for we're looking for suits and NIL deals. That's right. For, for some wings. <laughs> and, 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 the, and the things that Coach Pittman likes at Arkansas. Hey, speaking of Arkansas, they're tied now. 17-7. It was 17 nothing. Missouri State. It's now 17 to Patino making a pretty big comeback. Man riding it, riding it on his Come on, don't go riding it on his motorcycle to ruin Arkansas season. How dare oh, he do that to them? He went there. It's now 24-17, by the way. Missouri State is back. Wow. I mean, a lot of people say Arkansas is that third best team in the SEC. Man, man, Mississippi State. Mississippi State just went down to LSU. Yeah, great performance by LSU. Third down and five. Play clock winds under 10. Irons lofts it. Left side mm. picked off. Did he hang on? No, out of bounds. They say incomplete pass. Kamal had and had it in his mitts. And he's saying he did catch it. So let's take a peek. Uh, went a little bit. He looked like he got the left foot down and had possession for possibly a second. That's why you play DB, man. Come on, bring it in there. <laughs> if they do rule this an interception, he's out at the one yard line, but the field goal unit is out for Akron. Corey Smeagol missed one from 40 tonight. Yeah, ball's moving. This one's from 35. Check that. It's Noah Perez out to kick it for Joe Moorhead zips. And Perez from 35 is pure. The zips are on the board. Joe Moorhead's team will not be shut out tonight. 42-3 Tennessee Vols back to work on offense. Tennessee 42, Akron 3 at Neyland Stadium. Check out the action around the SEC. Woo. Folks, Missouri State over Arkansas is no typo, and Bobby Petrino's team is driving as we speak in Fayetteville. Florida leads South Florida 24-13 at half. Miami, Texas A&M early goings in College Station yep. tied 3-3. No, 10-3, A&M just put oh. it in, so. All they right. finally freed, picks. finally freed Max Johnson. That's your boy. It's my boy. I've been pleading for this. Tennessee will bring it out of the end zone with Jimmy Holiday, number six in Big Orange, steps through a tackle and is brought down at the 25. So speaking of around the SEC, Aaron, we asked you for your top five quarterbacks in the SEC. Run us through it here. 
Man, Bryce, obviously it's hard to, you know, not give him number one, the Heisman Trophy winner. It's just phenomenal last week in that win versus Texas. Hendon, God, I love watching Hendon. They see it all night. Stetson, man, my God, the mailman's just doing his thing. <laughs> I do think Anthony Richardson, long term, is going to be super successful in this league. He's going to have a big task coming in to hit this stadium next weekend, see if he can overcome what happened last week. And then Will Levis, just super, has the, has the potential too as well to make all the throws you want, big kid. And there is a new quarterback for Tennessee. Hendon Hooker's night appears to be done. Joe Milton, the transfer from Michigan, who began last season as the starter, takes over. You want to talk about big kid who looks the part and absolute massive at 6'5", 245. Keep it on the ground on the first two snaps. That's Jalen Wright, who scored a couple touchdowns tonight. And there's no doubt that, that Joe Milton is not incredibly gifted. And it's amazing that he, you know, he stayed around in this age. And Again, it's right, and he's going nowhere. Brings up fourth down. Now, Tennessee has been aggressive tonight. Four for four on fourth down. Oh, they're going for it again. Nope. I want to see Joe Milton punt, to be honest. I'm sure he's got a big leg. That dude is a freak freak, yep. as Alex Golish described him. Well, I want to see him continue to, to progress as a passer. I and mean, we're seeing a little bit of taste of that early on this season. But, you know, they're really excited. And they, they obviously were pretty pumped that he's, you know, back this year, going to be back again next year, uh, and has the opportunity to continue to learn the system and, and, you know, continue to work with his coaching staff. Paxton Brooks out to punt it away. The Zips nearly got a piece of that. Wide receiver Tony Grimes is back to receive. Ball bounces and dies at the 30. But going back to that top five list, Aaron, who is the, the toughest exclusion? Who's an honorable mention? Oh, man. I mean, I'll, KJ Jefferson, I, I've been a big fan of him, too. I think he's a guy I was surprised. I was surprised he came back. I thought after the season he had last year, then losing Burks, you know, he may you know test out the NFL market, especially with a weak quarterback class. But, you know, he's someone that I could – You'll maybe move Anthony out and move him in. Um, but they're struggling right now. I mean, yeah. lose tonight. That's not a good Ooh. look. 26-point favorites against an FCS team at home. Currently losing to Missouri State. Here's DJ Irons. Maybe he'll be playing in the SEC one day. Throws another strike to Alex Adams, an LSU transfer for a first down. Oh, this is a good opportunity for Tennessee. These, some of these backups we're going to start seeing in this game to you know, work your way into the lineup. You know, this isn't just wasted opportunities. You've got to go out there and earn a spot for, for upcoming games. Irons kept it, and that was not the right decision. Got absolutely whacked by Elijah Herring, the true freshman out of the Nashville area. Pressure, pressure, pressure. These linebackers from Beasley to Banks to Page and then Herring at number 44. You know, just that, especially when you're you're home and you're dealing with a silent cadence, you can kind of start getting a beat for when the quarterback and center are going to essentially make that signal to snap the football. These linebackers get such a great get off, able to get in the backfield and get some TFLs. Under five to play in the third quarter. Irons looking right now tucks it for a second again the heat is on and again he is dropped shoestring tackle by Bryson Eason brings up third down Man, great job on the back end no one was open having him to double clutch a couple times and then a talented defensive line making a play now this third down situation you get covered two there now they've not been afraid to attack the middle of the field, and, and one of DJ's best throws is a dagger route, which is great for us to cover two defense. Looks like Tennessee's gonna possibly bring some pressure, play some man-to-man -man coverage, creating some tight windows on the outside. Tim Banks gonna heat him up a little bit. Oh yeah, Irons has to evade the rush one time, and then he is dropped. Another sack for the Vols. Herring was in there again for a loss of nine. This guy's an exciting freshman. And there's absolutely nothing you can do when it's just a jailbreak from the defensive line. You got Joseph's number 19 coming off the outside. And then no one is blocking at all. 
Page, number 38, had a free run and had about four or five steps to essentially knock down the running back, forcing DJ off his spot. Here comes Noah Getman again. What's he got up his sleeve this time? Just a standard punt. No fake out of a potential blocker. Squirrel White calls for the fair catch. Tennessee starts outside of its own 35. Anytime we get to see that lettuce out of that <laughs> helmet, I'm happy. That's good stuff. Some envy over there, I feel like. I couldn't pull that off. No, neither could I. I wish. You know, he can wear it because it's, you know, he's only gets a handful of snaps a game, doesn't get too hot or sweaty in the helmet. When you have that much swag, you can do whatever you want. All right, Aaron, just to wrap up the, the quarterback conversation in the SEC, for the folks at home, like, that tells you just how good Hendon Hooker is. Because a, a former Georgia quarterback has Stetson Bennett, who's balling this year, behind Hendon Hooker. And look out, we've got some extra action after the whistle. Yep. And they've got to get this calmed down. Two flags on the field happening just across midfield. And they will have to sort this out. Jalen Kelly Powell, Aiton White was down. Looked yep. like Jimmy Calloway and Darian Lewis were grabbing each other. Yeah, it looks like Calloway threw a punch, which is big no-no. Oh. Ooh. Oh, whoa. Oh, you're about to see right now, yeah. but Callaway was out here throwing haymakers, few of them, actually, against Tyson Durant. This looks like Andre Johnson versus Cortland Finnegan. All right, back let's in the count. Day. One, bang. bam. Two, three. Oh, he's, he's throwing four on. Oh. Four. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Look at Hypel in the background. What are you doing? Well, there's your uh, escorting out the building. Yeah. I know you called that earlier in the <laughs> game, and there you go. You got one. Yeah. That's, I, I don't know what he said, but something about something. And that, that's, uh, that's uncalled for. That's unfortunate, man. It's been a clean game for Tennessee for the majority of the night, and I know it's gotten a little bit, some, some scuffles here or there. But looks like a pretty clean play. They're just blocking, and then he just starts throwing haymakers for no reason. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, the hell was that? There are three unsportsmanlike conduct fouls on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number nine, Tennessee. It also has a second UNS on number Tennessee. He's ejected from the ball game. There's also an unsportsmanlike conduct, number 28, of the defense. All those fouls are all set. The down will count. <laughs> what? <and> second down. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, there was, what, five punches thrown uh, yeah. by by, uh, <laughs> by Callaway there, and it's offset, but, you know. <laughs> wow. Let's, let's watch it again. <laughs> let's just see. All uh, right, well, there's a swipe. Okay, there's one swipe Bang. for 28. Bang. Yeah, there's no place for that. Eric, I mean, Eric, shoot, don't don't hurt your own hands. Seriously, dude. Yeah. Like, you're a former player, so maybe you can explain this to me. Why would you ever punch a guy with a helmet on? Well, I'm not a fighter, so I wouldn't <laughs> punch anyone anyways, but definitely not with a helmet on. It seems like limited upside there as Milton throws. There is a football game going on here. Yep. That's complete to Walker Merrill on the slant for a first down. Oh, and you automatically see that. The ball just pops out of his hands. And, and you know, Big issue last year was just down the field accuracy, but you know he's worked hard on that. And you know, talking with the staff yesterday has greatly improved on that. And you just think of you think of the Pittsburgh game, and and guys are running wide open, and he just is not able to to execute and, and really miss on some opportunities to kind of run away with the game. They ended up losing up there, at, you know, or excuse me, here to Pittsburgh, and uh, and kind of lost his job from there. So you know, as 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 like I said, stayed has mentally bought into everything that this coaching staff has, has put in front of them and you know is, is, is looking forward to a really really bright future and, and credit to him that's really rare 
for a guy, you know, in this day and age, I mean, Joe Milton could probably start at like 75% mm -hmm. of Power 5 schools. Three years at Michigan, now his second year at Tennessee. He's got one more year, year of eligibility left after this one. He's 6'6", 240, and can do backflips. Yeah. His buddy Hendon Hooker says the ceiling is not really a thing for him. Now, watching them mess around pregame, and he's acting like he's dunking on the goalpost, and he's got about a foot over the goalpost that he could have slammed down on. Uh, just a, a f absolute freak of an athlete. Third and five here stands and delivers that one a little bit behind his intended target, Ramel Keaton. Brings up fourth and five. Well, they, I mean, they're building a, a heck of a group of quarterbacks for yes. next year. I mean, I, obviously, Hendon you know, is going to have an opportunity to be a, a top pick in the NFL draft. And then, you know, they got a top recruit coming out of California. You know, we've got Jackson and Milton. It's going to be a great battle to see who ends up taking over this incredible offense. Fourth and five, they keep the offense out there. Tennessee's four for four on fourth down tonight. Play clock at five, and it looks like they'll use a timeout or maybe a delay of game. Kind of in no man's land here at the 44 yard line. Play of game, offense, five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. That'll give some more room to Paxton Brooks to kick it away. Aaron, you mentioned that five star quarterback. Can you say that guy's name? No, <laughs> not yet. I'll say his name when he gets on campus. Tennessee fans get used to saying this one a lot. Nico Iamaliava. Iamaliava. Hey man, I tell you what, they, they are they are super bullish on on Taven Jackson though, and he's he's another one that he looks the part. Watching him warm up, super young, super green, but can 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 rip it and has a size too. And they they're super excited at seeing what he can do in this offense eventually. Brooks on the boot. Shockey Jacques Louis calls for the fair catch at his own 10. It bounces, and that could be beautiful for Tennessee, but it rolls into the end zone for a touchback. They try to get too cute with it. Just knock the ball away. Like, what's the difference between being at the one yard line and the one and a half yard line? Just like right here, just knock it backwards. Don't try to place it, <laughs> just push it back. Yeah. How many balls does it take to down it at the one? Let's check out Tennessee's recruiting in air. And this is fascinating to me because you think about not just freshmen, but kids in the transfer portal. Like, you want to put up numbers? Mm -hmm. Come to Tennessee. You're going to run 100 plays a game. You see Iamaliava down there. He's a top 10 overall recruit, five star. Recruiting is booming right now. Yep. No, they're doing a great job. and. DJ Irons airs it out on first down, just missed. Well, and going back to the recruiting real quick, it, it's it's a it's a, obviously we know it's a fun offense. Like if you want to put up numbers, not just as a you know, it's not air raid where you think, okay, I can't be a running back. Like they there is a commitment to running. Obviously, we know the receivers are going to get stats, the quarterback's going to get stats. Uh, but defensively, with the, the with how aggressive Tim Banks wants to be, it is a fun defense to be a part of as well. So they're they're hitting on all the excitement factors. And then playing a Nealon is just a, a, a cherry on top as well. With under a minute left in the third, Jacques Louis going nowhere on the sweep. Joseph's in there on the stop. Yeah, I anticipate. I mean, then obviously the security of Hypo, he, he you know he gets the extension, uh, a little bit more money in his pocket. There's there's a sense that he's going to be here for a while. I don't think there's any place that he wants to go. Third and 12. Irons flushed. More pressure. Floats it up. Out of bounds. Throws it away with 10 seconds left in the third. It'll be fourth and 12 for the Zips. It's been a tough night for Irons. I mean, he's looked really good. He's made some big throws. No, he's made some big throws and, and, and still not 100%. You know, they were worried that you know, he may not, you know, wouldn't make this game and possibly even more based on coming the stuff that was coming out on Monday, but was able to heal up enough to get out here and, 
and, and compete, and I thought compete extremely well. Getman kicks it away. Squirrel White, the freshman out of Alabama, makes the fair catch at his own 43 yard line. Getman is just too cool for school. He barely even be bothered to run off the field. I just, does he love football or does he love football? Oh, yeah. I mean, my man, like, <laughs> bleeds football. Like, he just loves it. All right. Well, I want to see, you know, I, I, I know it's, 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 there's some of your backup receivers on the outside and, 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 and not your starting offensive line, but I want to see Milton let this, the, let this puppy ride. I want to see him spin it a little yeah. bit. He can get it to the end zone from here. Oh, yeah, they said 70 yards. If we have to throw a Hail Mary, he's, he's, he's our guy we're putting in the game. And they will throw it on the final play of the third quarter, and Milton will load it up and fire over. <laughs> Touchdown, Tennessee! <laughs> Ramel Keaton was naked behind the defense, and Milton put it on the numbers. I mean, there I don't know if there's anyone in the country that could make that throw the way he just made that throw. Uh, it, the ball was maybe 10 yards in the air for 60 yards. Spinning. I mean, where does he throw this from? The 35 on a rope in stride. <laughs> Look at the flick of the wrist. I mean, that was one of the most impressive throws I think I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, that that's that's just straight talent. And uh, I mean, those are throws he missed last year. Well, he ain't missing them now. My goodness. <laughs> Man, that was sick. Tennessee fans, the future is bright. Let Milton fling it, baby. <laughs> the big guy. Show what we can do with his arm. Rocky Top has been replaced with swag surf at Neyland Stadium. The vibes are off the charts. It's 49-3, Tennessee over Akron. Ball's about to move to 3-0 and and set up a date with Florida next week on Rocky Top, which should be a top 20, maybe top 15 showdown. Joe Milton just with a flick of the wrist threw it 57 yards for a touchdown. One play, 57 yards, four seconds on the scoring drive to Ramel Keaton, make it 49-3. Drew Carter, Aaron Murray, Ashley Strohline back with you. Thrilled to be here at Neyland Stadium. What a night it's been on a sellout crowd. Tony Grimes on the return for Akron. Spins off one tackle down inside the 20. And you say flick of the wrist. I mean, you know, like, if I had to throw that back in the day, and I'm not 6'5", <laughs> but, like, I'm, like, triple crow hopping. <laughs> and I mean heaving it. And it, it's going to look like a Hail Mary. It's going to look like, you know, Aaron yeah. Rodgers throwing a Hail Mary. It's going to be high. It's a moon ball. Floor. It's a moon ball. <laughs> Look at this. There's a little physicality still going on right now with Akron and Tennessee. But we, we've had some chippiness tonight. But Milton, it looked like he was throwing a five-yard out route. <laughs> like he was throwing a nerf ball. Yeah, that too. <laughs> DJ Irons back out there. Speaking of arm talent, there's another completion to Shockey Jacques-Louis, the Pittsburgh transfer, who's over 100 yards tonight. I mean, just... I mean, just, I mean, just a cool walk at me, step to the right. Oh, he's open. <laughs> it's just, what? that's silly. That is a 60-yard throw. I'm telling you, man, I would say 70% of the guys in, in, in college football right now would have to, like, double crow hop it just to get it there. And he's effortlessly just moving the pocket and just, all right, there you go, touchdown. Irons on first and ten, finds the running back Cam Wiley. Like, Aaron, what is it about a guy's mechanics? Is, is it just the size combined with the mechanics? How can a guy throw a football that easily? Well, he's a big kid. I mean, there's a lot. It's a big body throwing the ball. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that definitely helps. Um, you know, when you're able to use your body properly from the ground up, so your feet initiate it, then the hips, the, the torso, and then your arms essentially just there guiding the ball. He's got a lot of juice behind it. There's Wiley. Nice bounce to the outside. Around the right sideline, dragged out of bounds by Caleb Perry to bring up third down. I'd like to see Joe Milton with a driver in his hand. I think he could probably hit the ball about 325. 
maybe even more. Oh yeah, DeChambeau has nothing on Joe <laughs> Milton if he if he figure out how to swing a golf club. He'd be out there hitting it over the nets there. I don't know if they have a top golf here or not in, in, in <laughs> Knoxville, but you know he's 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 going over. Got to Lambert Acres in Maryville. Here, that's a nice course. <laughs> For some, it's a nice course. Others who fade off the tee, it's not as nice. <laughs> no. Third and three. Here comes the heat. Irons down in a heap. James Pierce will get credit for that sack, and Tennessee is pouring it on now. All right, sacks, not, sack numbers this year, just games on games on games up front. Just a four man not bringing a pressure. Just studs up front and just the willingness to get after the quarterback is James Pierce. And right now for Akron, too, you might need to start thinking about, you know, DJ's a little bit banged up. Do you take him out the game at some point as well? There's our man Noah Getman. Kicks it to Squirrel White. Look out, the freshman's got wheels. Squirrel White dashes around the outside and got tripped up by the shoelaces. That was Bennett Adler, number 93, who prevented disaster for Akron Special. Oh, teams. man, I got up. I was ready to go. I thought he was about to hit the corner and take that night night. Tennessee leads by 46. 46 going back to offense. It has been a night full of Rocky Top and Smokey celebrating and doing whatever that is I think doing a wrestling move on an inflatable gator they play Florida next week uh, 28 Rocky tops tonight guys is that an approximate measure or an exact count on Rocky top it's I, either way it seems accurate they had to warm up the vocal cords for next week because it's it's prime time as we see there it's it's time to eat some gators I don't know if you saw Will Levis in Kentucky Woo. eating a gator after the game that's what Tennessee's going to be hoping for that's too right. Here's Joe Milton back out to lead the Tennessee offense. And speaking of playing Rocky Top, Ashley Strohline is in the band. What you got, Stro? Yeah, well, I have made my way over here to hang out with the pride of the Southland, and I have found Mr. Samuel Thomas, and you are the official Rocky Top counter. So what number are we at tonight? 28. About to be 29. And would you look at that? Perfect timing, guys. Oh, my gosh, Stro. It's Walker Merrill who makes the band play again. Joe Milton is dealing. Well, the band's going to be exhausted tonight with all the Rocky Top being played, but uh, they'll sleep well and get ready for next weekend. Good old Rocky Top. I mean, Joe's like a different quarterback from what we saw last year. Yeah. You know what's funny? Like, they told us, like, it wasn't close in camp. Like Joe was the guy, yeah. and and you know, didn't perform. Hendon came in there and balled out, but they are they could not stop raving about him. I mean, just both quarterbacks, very cool comments. I mean, just <laughs> come on, it's not fair. I'm just up here, just <laughs> gushing, just jealous. And I was I was down the field. I'm not old. I'm what 31 years old. So I'm out there pre pre game <laughs> on the field in warm ups. I'm trying to throw the ball, make it feel like I'm I'm young again. And I mean I'm like trying to throw the ball 50 yards and it hurt. And Milton's out here just flick of the wrist, just throwing dimes left and right. Rocky top 29, 30. I mean, do we know the record? Get Bill Martin in here. You make a great point, Aaron, about how last year the quarterback competition, they said, was not close. Joe Milton won the job by a mile. A big reason why is, you know, in spring camp and in fall camp, when the quarterback is wearing a red jersey, you don't see how a guy feels pressure. And Hendon Hooker, that might be his best attribute, yep. the way he feels the rush and keeps looking downfield. It really translates to the game, translates to the game. But you see Joe Milton with the tools. That guy's as talented as they come. Yeah, there's a difference between being a it's like a it's like a baseball player a BP hitter you know a guy that comes out there in BP and just smashing it and then all of a sudden game hits and, and pitchers throwing curveballs and sliders and changeups and 
you look stupid at the plate. And, and and not saying Joe did that last year. Joe, Joe did not perform early on. And, you know, Hendon took advantage of his opportunity and just kind of ran away with it from there. But I mean, not many human beings look and can do what Joe Milton does with the football. And, and you know, I'm excited to see what he can look like. It, more he gets in this year than obviously next year. John Zell Norrell's on the carry for Akron as we come up on 12 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. And what's really cool about Hooker and Milton is they're super tight. They actually moved in together this year. Milton has a pit bull. Hooker's got a golden doodle puppy. They call each other's mom, mom. Like they are blood brothers. In fact, Hendon Hooker says blood couldn't even make them closer than they are now. Awesome. These dudes are super tight. Well, it's sure it's great for Joe to be around a guy like Hendon. On the give again, it's Norrell's first down, Akron. Yeah, those two, I mean, just, it's great to have that chemistry in the quarterback room. You know, we've seen a lot of quarterback uh, battles here in the SEC this, this season. You know, LSU had theirs, Ole Miss has theirs going on right now. We'll see if that's that's finalized after this weekend. A little offsides for, for Tennessee. Uh, Texas A&M made a quarterback change, and you know, I've been in, in rooms where you know, the starter wasn't really for sure. And Offside, defense number 88, by contact, five-yard penalty. It remains first down. Starter was benched, backup comes in, and just it's a it's a weird dynamic. And the fact that these two were able to put that, you know, what happened last year kind of behind them and say, hey, what's, what's best for Tennessee? And what's best for Tennessee is us working together to make sure that our room is ready to go each and every Saturday. And, and that leadership is kind of shown throughout this football team as well. It's another cool aspect of the transfer portal that doesn't get talked about a lot as Irons is complete to Grimes for a first down. Nice hurdle from Tony Grimes putting on a show here in the fourth quarter. This is going to sound like sappy for me, but it's cool that Joe Milton, who starts his career at Michigan, and Hendon Hooker, who starts his career at Virginia Tech, end up being teammates, roommates, and basically brothers. Yep. Yeah, back in the day, they probably never would have even met. No. There's good and bad. You know, I, I still am a little bit torn about the portal. Irons right up the middle. Short gain on first down. Speaking of portal. Um, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, I, I, is, Stetson, I, is Stetson done after this year? Could could DJ be the next guy? No, George, George is you know like Tennessee. Tennessee is a lot of guys kind of waiting in the wing. Georgia has done a great job recruiting that position too. And, and Carson, I'm, I'm I'm excited about Carson. And you know Brock is a lot of talent. And you know they have another young kid as well in that room. So you know it's it's. These elite programs, I mean, what do we know? You, you have to have a good quarterback or elite quarterback if you want to win. So they're just stockpiling quarterbacks left and right. Irons again, that running back swing pass has been there to John Zell Norrells this time for a first down. But now there's going to be plenty of teams in the SEC that are going to be in need of, of quarterback. And it's not just... It's not always looking for a starter. I think Auburn's a good example of this. You know, they went out there and got Zach Calzada. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if he was going to be a realistic opportunity to be the starter or not, but you bring competition, and, and it kind of forced that quarterback room to work a little bit harder this offseason. Obviously, it's not paying off right now, but they're, they thought it would. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're struggling. They thought. Harson is they're struggling on offense right now, and way too many turnovers in the first three games, and... They actually got punished by Penn State earlier, but you know, there's, there's, once again, there's multiple reasons for hitting the portal at that position. But Tennessee will not need that for sure, at least next season. Clyde Price, the running back. Free play for Irons. Zips it left side. Incomplete. Another flag, so... One, two, three markers on the flag now. A couple for an offside and one for a pass interference. And these are the mental lapses that you, you just, you got to get rid of as a team. I don't care if you're the starter, backup, whatever. Like, don't don't move. It's simple. You've done it your whole life. Don't move until the ball snap. And um, we, we've seen way too many of these here from, from the second unit for Tennessee. 
That's Christian Offside. Harrison. Defense, number 50, that penny will be declined. Pass interference. Defense, number seven, 15 yard penalty, previous spot, <laughs> automatic first down. <laughs> Correction of the foul for number 29. Thank you, Ken. What's going to be really interesting next year, Aaron, is when Nico comes in, Ia Maliava, as a five star recruit. One of the most highly touted quarterback recruits that this program has seen. And there's a lot of money in the pocket. Potentially $8 million. I mean, there's some speculation <laughs> that he's the $8 million guy that oh, we've man. seen reported. Uh, he's a big personality. He's got the pajama pants he wears in seven on seven. Like, this dude's a phenomenon. Now, if Milton struggles early, will the natives get restless in Knoxville? Yeah, I'm sure, especially if, if, if they have the season that they're that we all anticipate them having this year, which I anticipate them having a really, really good season. Um, expectation gets pretty high, especially a place like Tennessee. You know, there there is a tradition here, a very rich tradition. There's a high expectation of what Tennessee football should be. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what it should be at places like Tennessee and, you know, in Florida and Georgia and Alabama and LSU. Like you expect them. To, to be darn near perfect and there's nothing wrong with that uh, that's what makes these fans in this conference the best out there so yeah there, there will obviously be some frustration if, if things start off slow but you know, I trust this coaching staff they know what they're doing and, and we're seeing a little bit of taste of it early on the season with with what Joe's able to do now that he's a little bit more mature in the system no doubt second and four whoa hog tied in the backfield that was Clyde Price who got spun down in a hurry. Tell you what though. <laughs> Next week in this stadium, we thought it was juice in the first quarter. Man. I, I called I called Tennessee versus Florida two years ago. And uh, and obviously I've played in this stadium a couple times in <laughs> this place is especially with the light show. I mean this, yeah. this I, I've seen some light shows in the SEC. This is this is kind of fun. Timeout. Joe Moorhead uses his second timeout. Yeah. Can't even imagine this place for an SEC game if it's this loud tonight. We'll take the timeout with him. Fifty six three Tennessee over Akron and next weekend. Here we go. A 50 second meeting between Tennessee and Florida. You see, Gators have won 16 of the last 17. That is pretty jarring. Tennessee's going to be favored next week, especially if Florida loses tonight. They are down 28-24 to South Florida at the Swamp right now. Ooh, that is, man, for all the hype after that first week win versus man. Utah, and Anthony Richardson and that offense, and Florida's back. Billy Napier, and then, you know, last week was was pretty ugly versus, versus Kentucky there, especially in the second half. And then, you know, to be even in the game versus South Florida right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it's a big opportunity for Tennessee to continue to climb up in the East. Third and six for Akron and DJ Irons. Tennessee brings four. They set up the screen, and that is blown up in the backfield. That's Elijah Herring again. And Tyree West was in there, 42. Anthony Williams, the receiver. Yeah, I mean, look, let's let's just go back to the bigger picture of just Tennessee in general right now. You know, I, I think I'm just saying this just because I'm a Georgia guy, but I think we all know that Georgia's pretty darn good. Yes. Uh, but the East is after that. I think you know, as of right now, Tennessee's the second best. In my mind, Tennessee's the second best team. I think Tennessee's better than Kentucky, and and. The way Florida's playing, Tennessee's better than Florida. You know, they'll, they'll, they have to prove it on the field. But Tennessee's making some major moves, and I think they're going to make some major moves this season. 41 yards for Noah Perez, who hit one earlier, and this one sneaks in. Perez two for two. Tennessee's lead cut to 50.
great to be at Tennessee Vol tonight. They are all over Akron 56 to 6 getting the ball back with 622 to play in the fourth quarter back here at Neyland Stadium Drew Carter Aaron Murray Ashley Stroline with you as UT will move to 3 and 0 set up a big date with UF Florida next week here at Neyland Stadium balls above 600 total yards tonight and we will see the third quarterback for Tennessee tonight oh. it's number three Taven Jackson let's go say hello to the freshman out of Greenwood Indiana right outside of Indianapolis he is a highly touted recruit and a very athletic QB a raw guy who they see a big future for he's the younger brother of Trace Jackson Davis an all Big Ten basketball player at IU. Jackson making his second college appearance he had one rush for no gain in the opener against Ball State he starts here with a handoff up the middle to Justin Williams Thomas another freshman well, and this is why it's so critical in games like this that you take care of business as the ones and twos that way you can get freshmen some valuable reps Williams Thomas again this time runs into a wall because it's it's a big difference I don't care that the game's out of control it's 56 to 6 like the fact that you're getting in a ball game in front of fans and it actually means something uh, this is it's a great great to get some of the jitters out great to see what he can do and we're seeing across the country games that are supposed to be like this aren't happening over over and over again so the fact that they've gotten to this point and and who knows when he's going to get more snaps this year because you're about to get into SEC play for the majority of the way out so um, this is good for him I'm, I'm excited to see if they let him rip it just like they did with Joe earlier I'm sure not nothing crazy down the field but a couple throws here or there third down and one three plays three carries for Williams Thomas picks up the first down across the 40. Here we go again more talking after the whistle we've already had one Tennessee player ejected Jimmy Callaway did his best Mike Tyson impression threw five punches and got tossed this one settles down. And you I, I, I somewhat blame you because you were calling for it early like you wanted someone to get you, you put yeah. it in the universe you spoke it into existence for someone to get ejected and then bam all of a sudden <laughs> Jimmy starts throwing haymakers here we go Taven Jackson with time throws mm. over the middle caught first down Tennessee that's Jack Jancic number 22 in orange across the 40. Nice comfort oh. level in the pocket obviously it's nice when when you got that much time just sitting there but very calm good feet not over over doing it in that part that's a great throw I like that it's all about on all sports it, it, you know you think quarterback you think arm 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 they have such a big arm like no it starts with the lower body if your lower body's in sync you're going to be an accurate thrower and yeah, that's two throws where his feet were underneath him a good solid base and he's able to then drive to make those two completions coming up on four minutes left here in the fourth quarter Taven Jackson is out there third quarterback in the game tonight for Tennessee and that'll move the sticks on third down and one with Williams Thomas again. So is your first overall thought over there of, of Neyland. That's a pretty amazing environment. I've never heard one song played so often over the course of an hour. But it's awesome especially to see a sellout even in a non conference game. First and ten for Jackson. That's Patrick Wilk, the new running back in there for Tennessee. That's the slowest you will see this Tennessee offense move all year. All right now, just eating up the clock. Fans enjoying a nice victory.
Here's Wilk around the left side. Found a hole, brings Tennessee inside the red zone. Taven Jackson at the controls for Tennessee here. Under two minutes to play. Patrick Wilk is the running back. And he is near the goal line. Brought down at the one. I love, love these opportunities for these young players, the guys that don't get a lot of playing time to see if they can push it in there for one final score. Clock winds here. Out of character for Tennessee. Putting the finishing touches on a comfortable victory over Akron. Jackson keeps and waltzes in. First career touchdown for Taven Jackson. Could be the first of many. An impressive drive for the young man. Two good completions. He's able to flip one around a defender and then finish it off with a great read on the on the zone read. Defender crashes, he pulls it, has it. All three of these guys just so athletic and add that dynamic of running the football, which is so tough in this offense. Because you're going to spread them out. You're going to have numbers in the box. There's a lot of times. And then you throw in the fact that the quarterbacks can run. Makes it even harder for defenders to, to figure out exactly what's going to happen. Toby Wilson tacks on the extra point. Smokey's loving it, 63-6. Well, yesterday was the 50th anniversary of the first night game here at Neyland Stadium. Go back to September 16th, 1972. Number seven, Tennessee against number six, Penn State. Bill Battles Vols over Joe Paz Nittany Lions, 28-21. First night game in this historic building, which is a century old, Whew. looks as good as new. I mean, the renovations look great, you know. The new scoreboard, the new entertainment area. <laughs> tell you, to, it never gets old. Like, you're, you, when, you, when you drive up to this, it's just like, oh man, there's, there's the Roman Coliseum, just <laughs> a lot bigger. Right on the Tennessee River. Right on the Tennessee River. Right next to Calhoun's, which we've been told closes at 11, No way. I still don't know if I believe it, but I've got multiple reports. Here comes Hester with a big return for the Zips. Out to midfield. Blake Hester brings it out across the 50. I mean, the SEC venues, man, are just insane. We were in... Oxford last week like the VOD is not quite as big, but it's no. awesome. I mean yeah. the Grove and I never lose a party the square. I would say I never played at LSU um, But like when Tennessee's rolling which they are now in South Carolina like those are yeah Those places are a pain in the butt to play in for opposing teams I mean as a quarterback like when, when South Carolina gets sandstorm going it's just yes. like wow and then obviously this place just the sheer size and Energy, it's 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 at a different level. What about the swamp? What is that see, we, we played, you know, obviously we played them in a neutral site. So, yeah, you know, Jacksonville is just special just because of the 50-50. But you know, I grew up obviously living in Florida, so I went to games in the swamp, and that place is loud. I would I would say I would still rank the loudest is probably here, oh. South Carolina two, LSU gets loud. I've heard never been though. Long pass from Jeff Undercuffler, the new quarterback in there for Akron. Incomplete, brings up third down. 
Have you ever been to the JMA Wireless Dome in Syracuse? <laughs> oh, yeah. Gets loud up there, that, baby. That, not the Carrier Dome anymore? No, no. Since when? After, after 40 years, this year is the uh, first oh, year wow, of JMA Wireless. Oh, wow, that's sad. You know what's funny? They were the Carrier Dome for 40 years with no air conditioning. Yep. Now they're a JMA Wireless Dome, a leader in 5G with no 5G internet. <laughs> Every, every dad who comes there for parents weekend loves making those jokes. Clock still winds as fourth downs coming up for Akron. And that'll do it. 63 to 6 Tennessee all over Akron. Vols handle business. They're 3 and 0 for a date with Florida here next week. And they play Rocky Top for the 42nd time tonight. It's, it's, it's up there. We're, we will find out for next week, you know, what the record is. But yeah. it's, uh, it's a lot. Great win. Offense looks like they are ready to go to face the Gators next week. Defensively, a big question mark heading into the season. How, how much better can that defense be? And they're showing it right now. Josh Heupel's on the field with Ashley. Well, Coach Heupel, a dominating win tonight, but most importantly, a lot of guys getting a lot of game time experience. What are your takeaways from what you saw from your team overall? Uh, able to get some young guys, some good work here in the second half. I uh, thought defensively they did a really nice job. Offensively able to move it. Um, you know, the last drive, being able to run the football the way we did, a lot of positives there. I know you want to enjoy tonight's win, but everyone already looking ahead to next Saturday. Another sellout. It's your SEC opener here at Neyland. Tell me your thoughts on facing Florida and getting into conference play. Yeah, uh, important that our players and staff enjoy this one for a little bit tonight. Uh, tomorrow morning we'll move on and, and get ready for the Gators. Uh, our fan base is as good as any in the country. Uh, passion. Uh, tonight was electric. Uh, ball walk and, and uh, inside of our stadium. Can't wait for, uh, for next week. All right, Coach, we appreciate your time. Go celebrate. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Good stuff, Ashley. Josh Heupel's team, 3-0. and He signed a contract extension that just went public. Rocky Top is going to be home sweet home for him for a long, long time. That'll do it for us. Thanks for hanging with us at Neyland Stadium. A sold-out crowd. It was awesome to be here for our entire crew, led by Adam Coppinger and Greg Ambrose. Ashley Stroll out on the field. Aaron Murray up in the booth with me. I'm Drew Carter saying so long from Rocky Top. Tennessee moves to 3-0. and Go watch the Florida game. See if the Gators can hang on. UT gets UF next week.